forever. <laughs> Dog. Gonna go live in one what? Wait, we're live? Boing. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the best show. Here it is. The number one podcast in all of podcasts. And my name is Tom Sharpling. I'm the host of the tonight's installment and the host of uh, the host of every installment of the best show. It's funny how that works. Um, tonight, we have perhaps the greatest topic in the history of the best show. We will talk about it. It is the 50 most boring people. Should be people alive or ever. Let's try. We'll try to squ- tilt it toward alive. But if there's an exception, an ever will go with the ever. How about that? That's how we're going to do it. The phone number 201-989-0012. If you want to get in on the action now is when that begins uh, to call in and be a part of the topic. We're going to build the list. And you know how we do it now in 2023. 2023 Best Show Finishes List. Best Show Finishes List in 2023. We finish a list. Last year we would do a list. It would be a nine-episode part trying to figure out the top three candy bars. No more. We finish a list. We start a list. That means we finish it. So let's get to it. The best show begins now. Best show. Best show. Best show. Keep on laughing with the radio on Tuesday night, on Tuesday night. When all the other days have got you down. Hey, welcome back. It's the best show on a Tuesday night here in the waning hours of 2023, January, February, about to begin. Can you feel it? Can you feel that February magic? Can you feel the February magic? I can. Love's in the air. Valentine's Day. Other things, right? What else goes on in February? President's Day? Is that a is that a February thing? Is that February? Mike? AP Mike. Hello, Tom. Oh, hello, Mike. How are you? Oh, like a hello. Look, Chipper. You hear the the <laughs> again, pep in a step. This is what I'm looking for. President's Day. When is that? That's February, right? Yeah. Um, okay. it's been condensed to one day it used to be Lincoln and Washington, but mm-hmm. now we get one president's day, mm-hmm. which president do you, are you most excited about honoring on this president's day uh, this year? <laughs> I don't know. Lincoln's always a good one. Lincoln's your guy. I love yeah. it. Lincoln. Um, Oh, uh, of course it's black history month in February. Um, Yes, a uh, lot of stuff. Are you excited about the topic tonight? Yeah, I was trying to think of some, and um, it's kind of tough. I mean, I if, if somebody's boring, I usually tune them out pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was thinking about sports, mm-hmm. um, and Tony Romo immediately came to mind. Um, Tony, Ro- Tony Romo, the... The great the gas bag. <laughs> yeah, there's got to be. A, well, I'm thinking it's got to be another windbag, another sports windbag. I mean, Francesa I is a windbag, but he's not boring. We're going to talk in a minute about what constitutes boring. Um, okay. But uh, who else do we have? Do we have Pat? Pat, are you there? And I want to just say this right now. Pat, are you? First of all, Pat, hello. Hello. Welcome to the best show. 
Thank you. Welcome to uh, welcome from our end. Welcome. I love it. That's what I want to hear. Welcome. Very kind. I appreciate the welcome, and I welcome you back. Um, are you excited about talking about who's boring tonight, Pat? Do you have any ideas? Any 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 c- candidates you're going to throw in the mix once we get rolling? Yeah, I do. I threw one that that actually made the flyer earlier. That's and true. I'm sticking my guns on him. Okay. For sure. All right. I love it. And uh, do we have Jace? Is Jason around? Does he? Is he a part of the show tonight? Is he around? I know he's in and out. I don't know if he's in, in now or out. Mm, I think he's out. We'll get him. We'll get. He'll be back. He'll be back in a minute. He'll be back. Um. And I want to just make this clear. If anybody calls 201-989-0012 and they start going, Pat's boring, Mike's boring, you're out. You're banned for five years. Jason's boring. If you say any of the people are boring, oh, look, if you say, uh, even if you say Andrew's boring, I'm not going to, I'm not going along with that. You hear that, Andrew? I did, Tom. Yeah, thanks for they not allowing They say you're that. boring. And congratulations, Andrew. Your team's going to the Super Bowl. Right? Yeah, thanks, Tom. The Eagles. It's exciting stuff. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, but if anybody says Pat's boring, Mike's boring, Andrew's boring, Jason's boring, you're out. Five-year suspension. You're kicked off the show for five years. And I also want to make it clear that, uh, look, if you say Brad Bohm, hmm. Penalty five minute in penalty box on that one. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Brad, I love Brett's not boring. Um 201-989-0012 is the number to get in on the action. The magic, some would say. I would say, because it is magic. The best show is magic. A couple things I just want to tell you all about, just so everybody knows. You're always saying, What's the deal with the best show? How can I be a part of the family? Well, you go to patreon.com slash the best show and you get all the bonus content that we put up there's bonus stuff going up on um we just had a rubenesque just went up a a new episode of rubenesque the the podcast in which me and the best show crew go album by album year by year through the rick rubin uh producer uh catalog That is up on the Patreon. You can only get it there. Other stuff, Ask Tom, for Best Show for Horsemen. More stuff coming. Um, we are working on stuff now, so get ready. Um, and you can get the ad-free version of the Best Show over on the Patreon. Patreon.com slash the best show. And you can also get the ad-free version if you're a Forever Dog Plus subscriber at Forever Dog Plus. Sound like JFK here for a minute. I want to let everybody know. And you go if you listen to the best show, however you do, you get your podcast app and you rate and review the show. Give us six stars if possible. Five, we'll accept five, six if possible. Uh, that all helps, and you can always follow the best show on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter at Best Show Four Number Four Life. That's where we are on all the social media and YouTube. dot com slash Best Show Number Four for Life. Best Show for Life. All the clips and video goes up over on YouTube. It's great. We're doing a whole lot, and we're just at the very beginning of it, and we appreciate all the support and we're working hard and you're enjoying it and it's going to keep going up 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 that's how we do it best show styly baby let's go to the phones and see oh we just heard friction from uh the uh first television album um marquee moon one of my all-time favorite albums um tom verlaine uh Passed away uh, a few days ago. Really, that one that would hit a little harder for some reason than than other ones for for musical heroes. Because television, really, that's the, the, please that album. Marquee Moon is like it just stands as this towering achievement. Uh, it manages to to move. 
whatever you would call punk or new music at the time, whatever you want to call it. Uh, categories don't help anything sometimes, and especially in this case, categories don't help. Television moved moved everything forward, leveled everything up. There is nothing better than that album. I love Adventure also. I love the Reunion album. Lie, oh, please, there's Tom Verlaine solo stuff. I'm not as well versed in that, uh, but just a legend, a, a total, uh, com- just completely brilliant, an architect of all the stuff that we love. Um, so rest in peace, Tom Verlaine, and um. Bing, bong, so you're asking yourself, what is boring? Because the topic tonight, 50 most boring people. Man, it could be. It's mostly going to be alive. I'd like to keep it for boring people alive. Because then what am I going to say? Uh, 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 James Madison was boring. I don't know. Was he? I don't know. Look, I don't even know who that is. I think he was president at one point. I think he also might be like uh, an ice cream named after him. Not exactly sure. Again, not a whole lot of uh, book learning going on over at Best Show. We are uh, crafty. We 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 figure it out uh, on the ground. Um, not unlike a Bugs Bunny, for example. We get by with our craftiness, and uh, so yeah. So I don't know these people from the past, but I do know people now. And what does boring mean? to us well here's what boring means it doesn't mean being smart there are so many smart people that are not boring Mishu Kaku for example not boring interesting smart and interesting Neil deGrasse Tyson smart but boring I always love when he's like, well, actually, if uh, Superman was to fly as fast as he would, his skin would come off his face. Okay. By all means, kill any fun anyone's having. It's it's like Christmas morning. Christmas morning. the, The greatest day of all days. December 25th, Christmas morning. And... He's like, uh, actually, Santa Claus's sleigh would have to move uh, 30,000 miles an hour. Or two. Okay. Let's start the list right off. Number 10, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Top 10. Boom. Number, right off, right off the bat. Number 10. Right off the bat. Number 10, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Jason, was that you? Was that Jason Dudio Gore? That is me. How are you tonight, Jason? I'm good. It's good, good to be here. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm at whatever definition of you know good is right now for what we're going through. But we're going through it. Well, you have our obviously everybody's uh, you know here for you and it. yeah, I appreciate it. And what you guys did last week and that was that was really really nice. And if anybody donated to Best Friends, you know, you just shoot me an email and I, I'd like to personally thank you. Oh, that's very you kind. So and, uh, you just email me at thejasongore at gmail.com. Yes. That's my real address. Look at that. He's giving his real email address. I'm not even giving you a fake one. Yeah, he's not even giving a fake one. Um, Do you have anybody anybody for this boring list, uh, Jason? Oh, Let's start it God. off with you. This might be my favorite and list I'm gonna just say, done. And I just want to say this. Yes. I said it earlier. I don't know if you heard it. If anybody says Mike is boring, Jason's boring, Pat's boring, <laughs> five-year okay. suspension. Five-year suspension. Good Lord. Yes. Okay. I wouldn't I wouldn't have said that anyway. And look, there you people, guys were very kind to me last And people last are saying Jason is boring, Tom. You need to <laughs> you need to make an exception. Yeah. What rhymes with gore? Yeah, I see that Minneapolis, Mike. Thank you. That uh very good. And look. I said right off the bat, five-year uh-huh. suspension. But 
No, 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 I can't. I can't do it. No, <laughs> okay. I need to hold to it's my. It's fine. I need no, to be no, true to my. No, no, I need to be happy. true to my roots. Who you yeah. said you think tonight's a great topic. I what, do. I what, think this uh, is probably, what, probably one of my favorite lists we've done. Who hmm? I, I right off the bat, I'm going to say just because I saw a clip of his stand up the other day, mm-hmm. I would like to add Jeremy Piven to the list. Jeremy Piven. See, he. There's a whole lot of problems with Jeremy Piven. Annoying, offensive. Have you seen the stand up? No, but I've seen him do other things. Okay. He just might just be bad at stand up. Yeah. But is he boring usually? Is he? I'm asking. Is he boring like in an interview? Well, he got kicked out of that uh, Broadway show and he blamed it on the mercury and his sushi. Mm, He quit. He quit the show. He quit the show because he realized he wasn't going to win no Tony award. And then suddenly the sushi got to him <laughs> as I think how that went. Okay. okay. That's, that was well, mine. then maybe he's not boring then. Maybe he's mm. actually. And I'm getting know. it. Yeah. Let's see. Let's uh, let's. Uh, I, I'm so sorry to do this to you. Okay. Wow. Okay. Jeremy Piven is not going to make the list tonight. That's good. That's good. I oh, only broke no. down in a uh, snacks aisle at a Vons today, Tom. But you know, it, we'll we'll keep him off the list. That did happen, by the way, and luckily no, nobody course, saw me. Of course it did. Of course I'm not. Uh, I'm not because I would have been like I would have blamed it on the pretzels. Nobody did the pretzels. You were sad looking at the pretzels. <laughs> There's so many kinds. Pretzel sticks. I, I do see uh, one in here that I would salt. like. To, <laughs> too much salt. No, there, yeah. There's so many pretzels. I got overwhelmed and started crying. Yeah, yeah. that's why I'm. I'm um, crying. Don't don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. I'll, the next door will have it. Yes, you'll. Um. So since mine was booed, can I add one that somebody in the chat just said that I agree with 100? percent What's that? The edge. I've seen the edge thrown around a couple times. He is boring in that documentary. Uh, and I got a, a couple people. I got a couple texts as soon as the topic started from uh, Jeff F and a couple others. Larry Mullen Jr. People mentioned the edge. The edge seems to to be. Uh, um, let's put the edge at 40. We'll start at 40. We're going to fill 40. the list in nicely. Um all right, let's go to the phones. Let's go to the phones and see what's up tonight with the people. And look, you can like these people. I see somebody, hey, I kind of like the edge. You can like him. You can think he's the greatest guitar player ever. He's boring, though. He's a little boring. He's a little boring. Is that fair, right? I mean, there ain't no crime. Here we go. Hot phone. Ooh, no, not the hot phones yet. Uh, hello, best show. Hi, Tom. This is Matt in Minneapolis. Thanks for taking my call. Matt in Minneapolis. How are you tonight, Matt? I'm I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I um, have a couple uh, for the list. Okay. Um, the first one I... So people, I you called... Matt, that. just hold on. But, 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 you called 201-989-0012 to get through. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, good. That's all I wanted to know. What else? Okay. okay, so let me well, hear who you've got. This, uh, so the first one, I thought this was uh, easy pickings at first, but now I'm kind of wavering. I think I might, I'm not sure if this is just a grump or if this is truly a boring person, but the one that came to mind was Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick is not boring. You don't think he's boring? He's okay. weirdly fascinating. About- he's a mumbling, he's a mumbling grouch. He ain't boring. Okay, fair point. Fair point. Okay, well, the second one, and I'm glad you added the disclaimer about um, saying you can like this person. Because, again, because somebody, like like I said, somebody can be smart. Being smart does not make you boring. Being grouchy does not make you boring. Being somebody of few words does not make you boring. These are not in and of themselves uh, uh, identifiers of uh, being boring. Being boring is kind of this amorphous, you need to be a little bit of a blowhard, you need to be a little self-important, you need to miss the point, a li- you know what I mean? Like, you need to just, you just need to miss the mark. Like, somebody 
said to me, hey, Tom, what about Peter Gabriel? And at first I was just like, Peter Gabriel? No, Peter Gabriel's not boring. I love his music. But the thing is, it's not about his music. Peter Gabriel's a, a great musical artist. But he's kind of boring when he talks. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Matt? Mm -hmm. That's what I mean yeah, when I say I boring. Do. Like it's that magical missing thing. You could like somebody and they could be boring. You could hate somebody and they are not boring though. Well, so. I'm feeling much more confident in this next one because I think it checks all the boxes you mentioned. Let's this hear uh, person is uh, Carson Daly. Carson Daly. Yeah, he's pretty boring. Has he ever he's, been I, interesting? I think part of it was just his, you know, his, he was on for so long. You know, he was, it's like he started out, he was uh, perfect for, you know, whatever MTV was doing with TRL, but then he just kept getting work. He didn't go away. But that's the thing. You know, well, let's think like, of that. Is, 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 nice. is, 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 is Carson Daly annoyingly shallow or is he actually boring? You can be worthless, but not boring. Hmm. Car Carson Daly ain't got no boring uh, and any value. Like is Jello Biafra boring? Joe Biafra is kind of interesting. Not not for me, but he's he's doing his thing. Okay, all right. Good to yeah. hear. Good to hear. Well, I'm like, not sure uh, about I'm not doing, sure about Carson uh, Daly. I'm not sure about Carson Daly. Okay, well, I else? did my best, but I I guess my best. You gave your best. best. But, but thank you for taking my call. You gave your best, but I guess your best wasn't good enough. All right, thanks, Tom. Thanks for the night. call. Thanks for the call, my friend. And look, I'm seeing in the chat people are saying Jello Biafra, not boring. I said, is Jello Biafra boring? Hello, Best Show. Hey, it's Kevin. Oh, hey, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing great. Well, where are you calling from, Kevin? Georgia. Kevin, you're calling from Georgia. What part of Georgia? Uh, north of Atlanta, Johns Creek. Johns Creek. You ever go swimming in that old creek? There's no, there's no creek. There ain't no creek in Johns Creek? <laughs> Not really. Hmm. Faulty advertising. Uh, false advertising. Well, what do you got for me, Kevin? Well, uh, I've got two that are, I, I believe, very good. Like, maybe ringers. Okay. The first one would be Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky. Because the thing is with Noam Chomsky, he's he's interesting. Right? He's smart. Yeah. 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 But, he but to listen to him, kind of boring. He might be boring. Yeah, too many clip notes. 35, Noam Chomsky. All right. I've got one more. Yeah. And I'll let you go. Okay. Uh, George Lucas. George Lucas is very boring. Um, yeah. 40, uh, f uh, we'll do, uh, 32 for George Lucas. Well, that sounds good. Mm-hmm. Because George Lucas is boring. Well, thank you. All right, my yeah, friend. Yeah, he is. Okay. All right. All right, Tom, you have a great night. You have a great night also, Kevin. All right. Now, uh, uh, Pat, Pat, anybody come to mind? Anybody, Pat? Well, I mentioned in our group chat, and this made the flyer, of course, Ben Stein. 
But I know that he's played boring, and maybe he's a little more lively when he's not in character. No, he's boring. If you've ever heard him actually talk in real life, yeah, he's truly insufferable. Right. Um, Plus, to play that boring, you have to. It has to come from somewhere. Yeah, I agree. Number sixteen, Ben Stein. Mike, anybody coming to mind? I mentioned Kelsey Grammer in the chat. That seemed to get a good he's response. Kind of a, a blowhard. Yeah, he's got that blowhard energy, right? Yeah, like that good droning. Old, yeah, you like it needs to be that kind of person when they just start talking. You're just like, yeah, you zone oh. out. You're like, oh no, they're talking about like Robert De Niro is boring. <laughs> when he talks yeah, he about is. acting, he's so boring. One of the most compelling actors is so boring. For some reason, when you said Robert De Niro, I immediately thought of Steven Seagal. Mm -hmm. Not boring. I don't know why. (laughs) But he's not boring. You don't think so? Steven Seagal, no. I can't take my eyes off him. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. Okay. You don't think? Well, first of all, he's cool. He's incredibly cool. (laughs) Uh, He's got that. I can't. You know how I always feel about cool people. I'm always trying to win their favor. Uh huh. Um. Oh, there's a really good one. Somebody just said on on uh, uh, Twitter, Michael Jordan. <laughs> he is so boring. <laughs> Brett Boehm, am I wrong about that? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I thought he was amusing in the uh, that that uh, documentary. You did smoking a cigar and cracking himself up. Ugh. I, want to... <laughs> I mean, I think Kevin Durant is more boring than he is. Well, Kevin Durant is boring, also. <laughs> Kevin Durant is very. I think. Well, look, there's room for both. Yeah, okay. Michael Jordan. Let's well, let's honor their <laughs> uniform number. Number twenty three on the list is Michael Jordan, <laughs> and number thirty five on the list will be Kevin Durant. <laughs> we'll honor his original uniform number. And Brett Boehm says all elite athletes are boring. Um, not about all. You know, as boring as uh. Aaron Rodgers is also boring, but I don't know if, I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's go back to the phones and see what's up. Let's see what's up on the phones tonight. Boom, it's Paul. Hello, best show. Hey, it's Max Beasley in Los Angeles. Max Beasley, the comedian, the, the famed comedian, Max Beasley, the... <laughs> who is always doing stand-up around Los Angeles. How are you, Max? I'm well. How are you, Tom? I'm good. I'm good. Um, Welcome to the program. Uh, Do you have anything for this topic about the most boring people? I do. I have a few. Uh, First off, Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner is boring. Like, like you mean in interviews and, and things like, yeah, I don't know. Well, in general, I mean, to me, his most convincing role was as the GM for the Cleveland Browns in draft day. So you think Kevin Costner is boring as an actor and, and as a person and as a person. That the whole is, thing about him having to shelter in place during the during the Golden Globes or whatever. Mm-hmm. Number. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, third. Do it for me. Well, let's try. We're gonna try it. We might start removing some of these if truly bo- if 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 they get usurped by other boring people. Forty-two, Kevin Costner, please. Take that. Uh, mm-hmm. Another one. Uh, Joe Rogan. See, I don't think Joe Rogan's boring. He's a dunce. 
He's a dimwit. He's a clown. He's a, uh, he's one of these people who uh, uh, hears an idea and immediately slides all his chips in on it. He's uh, unfunny. He's uh, he looks like a snowman that they took the middle section out of. Um, he's yeah, he's uh, he sucks. I don't think he's boring though. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, you were talking about sports guys? What about Chris Collinsworth, the broadcaster? Chris Collinsworth, he is boring. I do feel. I think the most boring announcer. That's a good one. Who's the most boring? And somebody needs to embody all the sports casters for boring. And part of me wants to say either Phil Sims or Boomer Esiason. Yeah. Yeah, all those guys is kind of the same deal. Okay. Yeah. Mike? Hey, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking. What do you think, uh, Phil Sims or Boomer? So who's they're pretty boring, right? Yeah, but they just sit on a panel now. They're not uh, stinking up the broadcast that much. Okay. I was thinking more of like the announcers, like Joe Buck. I'm not a fan Joe, of Joe Mike, Buck. Mike, Mike, you just that's the one right Joe there. Joe Buck. That's it. Joe Buck, the number of announcers. number eight. Joe Buck. <laughs> that's a top that's ten it. bore. Joe Buck, and he might climb. Also, he might not be, he might not sit at eight wow. when we're done with this. Joe, Joe Buck really does feel similar to Kevin Costner to me. Yeah. There's a lot of snooze rooney energy coming there. Max Beasley, where can one see a Max Beasley uh, perform? Hello? Max? Max, I think we lost Max. We lost Max. No, no. The phone number 201-989-0012. And tonight we got a big show. This is a big show tonight. Big show, big show. We got hot phones going. This is one. This is one for the record books. I can tell you right now. Let's go back to the phones. Hello, best show. I'm hearing something. Tell me you forgot that total monster jam, did you? What's that? What you were just playing? Yes. I couldn't hear it. Yeah, we did it. Only the greatest collab in the history of music. The greatest collab in the history of music is what now? Metallica, Ja Rule, and Swish Beat. That was the greatest that was the greatest collab? Yeah. So you remember it in some kind of mobster when they show Bob Rock pretending that song isn't flagrant dog crap? <laughs> yeah, Bob Rock. Um, Wait, who am I talking to, first of all? I think you, you might recognize I got a little bit of an accent. L- Look, I know who this is. I was just playing a little bit because you get a little too cocky, <laughs> Philly boy, Roy. I wanted to make okay. I wanted to make you feel a little. I wanted to just make you, make you, make you not. I didn't want you too cocky coming into it. That's okay. That's okay. I get it. I I get it. How are you tonight? I'm doing okay. You know, speaking of of Metallica and some kind of monster. You know they cut me out of that flick, right? Wait, Metallica cut you out of the Some Kind of Monster documentary? Yeah, yeah. I This is totally news to me. How did, How is this the oh. first time I'm hearing this? 
I never told you that. It's so weird I, that you don't know about this, considering you've gone full on metal recently. I well, I didn't go full on metal. I've done a couple interviews over the last uh, few months. Not no, f- people on the people on the streets are calling you Metal Tom. <laughs> they are. Yeah, they 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 call you the Armored Saint of Radio. Well, that that might be the nicest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. And- <laughs> yeah, the Armored Saint of Radio from your lips. Yeah. From your lips to God's ears, Roy. That's right. So check it out. I tried out for bass after New Kid Split. You tried out for bass after who? Looks like someone needs to crack the back cover of Garage Days Revisited. They call him Jason New Kid on the back cover. Oh, of that. okay. Got. It. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not as. Uh... Not as metal as, you, as I thought you were. Not as metal as you thought. No, Roy. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> so, so, yeah, check it out. Back in the day, I played bass in a flagrant metal band called Wet Cherry. What? You played bass in a band called Wet Cherry? Yeah. Ugh. I don't like that we- name. We was good. And and I, I got to say that the highlight of our show was my bass solo. Okay. Tell me more about this bass solo. Well, you know how Michael Anthony from Van Halen played that bass in the shape of a JD bottle? Yes. Jack Daniels. Yeah. Well, well, I played a bass of my own that was in the shape of a bottle of Yingling. Okay. Only mine was actually full of beer. So, wait. Your your actual base, yes, yeah, was filled with alcohol. Oh yeah, yeah. My base tech Topher Lundell, he he would fill it up while we were doing our huge regional hit, which of course was rocking your row house to the ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't know. I, I didn't I, know that was a. I didn't know that was that you had a regional hit. Oh yeah, it was number eleven in Delaware. Oh. Congratulations uh, on that. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, and I, I do want to say, I want to pour one out for my, my, my man Topher. He, he recently went to the big Wawa in the sky. So, well, uh, oh, yes. Was, of my condolences as well. He was a good that. guy. I never saw him with sleeves. Every shirt was a cutoff, had cut off <laughs> sleeves. Well, th- some people don't like the sleeves, Roy. They just don't. They they're living a sleeve free life. That's right. He he was like the David Snyder of Northeast Philly. That's one for the heads. I I appreciate you catering to the heads when it comes that, to yeah. That, that's for all them Bob readers out there. <laughs> yeah. That if by all by all means let's uh let let's keep let's keep playing the armored saint. Your armored saint reference wasn't obscure enough. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Next thing you know, I'm 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 going to be talking about um about the Johnsons and um and some of those Ben Vaughn spinoffs. Yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm ready. I'm ready for your electric love muffin chunk at this point. <laughs> the call ain't over yet. Okay. All right. Yeah. The call ain't over yet. That should <laughs> no. be that should be uh, that should be written somewhere. I don't know where, but That's maybe right. on maybe on a statue, maybe on a bathroom wall. But I maybe don't, your maybe your tombstone. Maybe my tombstone. I'll I'll yeah. allow it. <laughs> You're more of an urn man. Roy, I don't know how you know me as well as you do. Sometimes I think I do. sometimes I think this guy doesn't know two things about me. Other times you say he's an urn man, and I'm like, he maybe is the only person in this life who truly gets me. That's right. Never forget that. Never oh. forget that. <laughs> okay, I won't. Okay, so getting back to Wet Cherry. Yes. Um, we, we also had another popular song called Sex is on the Menu for Tonight. Ugh, I don't like that title. Well, hardly anyone did. And the song was very controversial, not so much for the erotic lyrics, but because of the for tonight part. 
Okay. Why and why is that? Well, basically, the Philly Inquirer totally slated it when we came out. I, I still got the review in my wallet. Hang on. It was Ken Tucker. He said, this song contains the worst use of the English language in a pop song, possibly since McCartney's This Ever-Changing World in Which We Live In, and definitely since the Ramones pronounced Massacre, Massacre, in order for it to rhyme with me. Now, see, that, that whole sentence, I think, is really unwieldy. So it's like, who's calling the kettle back? Yeah, it really is one of those cases of who's calling the kettle back. Yeah, I just said that. And I'm I'm just backing you up, my friend. Oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. But but getting back to my bass, don't that sound like a cool bass? One that that actually you can pour yingling from. Yes, yeah. I mean, sure, I I'd get massive shocks from all that beer splashing on me, but it was worth it to see those Philly metalloids losing their s as I rained liquid thunder down on their asses. Mm-hmm. So that was it was worth getting electrocuted over and over flagrantly electrocuted Flag- flagrantly during a show yeah okay um but look so yeah. one night who shows up at our show but jimmy hetfield uncle lars baby k and the cliff man what what, what do you call this is uh, this is clearly metallica you called uncle lars that's what you call yeah that's what the, that's what all us insiders call him, Jimmy. There's Jimmy, you know, because his name's James. Yeah, so you act but, like but, this this false sense of familiarity. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, Uncle Lars. Yeah. Again. B- Baby K. He was the new kid in, at the time. Uh huh. Kirk. Yes. And the Cliff Man, Cliff Burton. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. The late great. So they came to see us play at the Empire Rock Room after their show at the Tower with Motorhead. Mm-hmm. And they went nuts for Wet Cherry. Metallica did. Yeah. They they came backstage and boy did we hit it off. Okay. Well, I'd like to hear more about that. That's very interesting. Yeah. After a couple minutes, you know, just chewing the fat, I go, Hey you guys, come drink from my base. Uh-huh. Which much like the caller who referenced my old kids the other week, I think it's probably the only time that phrase has ever been said on earth. Hey guys, come on. Why don't you have a, have a drink from my base? Come drink from my base. Come drink from my base. Okay. You probably never, that's probably the only time that's ever been said, right? Uh, It really must be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm 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 usually feeling like well you know people people exaggerate stuff like that. There's a however many people on this planet talking all the time, and for all of history, I'm still gonna say yeah, you're right. That's the one time that has been said. Yeah, thanks. So Metallica was so into us mm-hmm. that they wanted to take us on tour, but all five members of Wet Cherry was on home confinement. Home confinement. Yeah. Is that like house arrest? Yeah, we did some stuff, you know, that that uh, people would probably frown on. But, you know, this was back in the days where those ankle monitors were held on with Velcro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so all you had to do was unfasten it, put it on your bed, and then go out and bring the ruckus. That's all you had to do to beat the, to beat the rap so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. But you know, four weeks being gone, that's a bit too chancy to just leave, leave that monitor on your bed. Right. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't do it. No, that's a hard one to just count on, um, to count on the not biting you again somehow. It is. Yeah. So anyway, all right. So fast forward a couple decades, Jason Newstead quits Metallica they remembered me and they invited me to try out. Really? Yeah. Okay. They were like, Hey, we should get the guy from wet cherry into, to audition. Oh yeah. Yeah. And Tom, 
this is going to come to a huge surprise to you, I know. But even though I hadn't picked up my BC rich bitch in 20 years, I told him I was more than up for the job. So you think I'm not going to, yeah, the fact that you were unqualified, under, under talented, way out of practice, way out of practice. Didn't even own a base no more. Yeah. Didn't even own a base no more. That you still just said, yeah, I'm up for, I'm, 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 I'm your guy. Count me in. Yeah. Cancel, cancel all them other auditions. I'm your dude. Yeah. So what did I do when I got out there and it was crunch time? Uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Okay. I did what every self-respecting musician who's ever been given the opportunity of a lifetime would do. What's that? I rocked out violently and showboatily in an effort to distract them from the fact that I had turned my bass volume all the way down so they couldn't tell that I couldn't play. Sure. So you overcompensated with the physical part of it. The histrionics, yeah. Yeah. And and how did that, uh, I mean, did they catch on? Oh, well, Tom, you know... Once they started to get suspicious, I started to panic, and I knew I had to take it up a notch. Mm -hmm. So I poured beer into the $30,000 base they lent me. You poured beer into it? Yeah, and I tried to drink from it. What are you... Why would you do that? Because I thought that's what they liked about me in Wet Cherry. That, that you could drink from your base? Yeah, but it was different than my base. My base was all hollowed out and had like a, a like a little reservoir for liquid. This didn't have that at all. So the beer just sunk into the pickups and then it shorted out the base, which caused the amp to blow up. Mm-hmm. Which caused a small fire. Y- yeah. Which caused the sprinklers to go off. Mm-hmm. Which soaked and ruined that cool, tiny, novelty car James Hetfield drives in some kind of monster. So all of this ruined the, the, you really did a lot of damage, is what you're saying. Well, it's not my fault he insisted on bringing that little car inside. He thought guys were going to steal it, I guess. It's not your fault that he brought that little car inside. Which so yeah. that so that kind of justifies you to pour beer into a thirty thousand dollar bass guitar to cover like for the fact to cover for the fact that you didn't have the talent for the job you said you did. I think you're just nitpicking now. You think I'm just nit? Sure, maybe maybe I'm getting a little too uh, maybe I'm getting a little too pedantic here, crossing the eyes and dotting the t's. Okay. All right. So, so uh, obviously after this incident, I was persona all gratin, right? Right of, there, right? Of course, yeah. So, they wouldn't even let me back into the building to retrieve my hoagies. Okay. You're saying that like that's a, it's a, a, a what, a couple sandwiches? When there was 10 hoagies. Okay. Well, you set fire to the building and you ruined oh, I- his car. Well, I figured I was going to be jamming in there for for, for days because I was going to be the guy. And I was so mad when they kicked me out that I hid the hoagies and I didn't even tell them where they where they was. And uh-huh. then, of course, they, they started stinking after a few days because they couldn't find them. Yeah. Well, you know, Roy, I hit him in the I hit him in the drop ceiling. <laughs> That's food doesn't belong I, I don't know why you would waste everyone's time. Well, actually, I, I, yeah, I get it completely. Never mind. I just thought I could do it. I mean, what's wrong with just thinking you can do it and and, and doing something that's on a world stage? Uh, when you're when when you know you are not qualified for it, what's wrong with it? Yeah, you're kind of wasting everybody's time. Look. I'll be the first to admit that Robbie Trujillo was the best person for that job. Okay. Okay. But 
word on the street is that they went with him so they could get some of that crossover appeal with people who like bands with crouching basketball players in them. People do love people love their music when it's pl- when the when the bass is played by a guy who is in like some combat stance. While, yes, while, almost like a, he's like a combat catcher. Yes, while wearing uh, a a basketball jersey, oversized basketball jersey, an oversized basket. Yeah. Okay, but look, let's forget about all that. I, I I digress so much. Obviously, I played that song in celebration of us Eagles pounding the snot out of them forty niners. <laughs> yeah, Eagles won. We did it! Oh yeah, just when you thought it was over. We did it! You're really hitting the we part of this uh, uh, pretty hard, huh? Well, did you see us make mitts meat out of their defense? I mean, we was all over them. They couldn't stop us. Why do you get... It's... This This always gets me. This, this is one of those things that really... Um, it's when these fans... Talk about a, a sports team, and they insist on saying "we" as if they were a part of the victory somehow. What you don't like that? I don't. You probably don't don't like when a band's manager or booking agent says stuff like "we played a hundred and fifty shows a year, earning fans the hard way every night." Mm-hmm. When that person never left the office except for the biggest show. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They came to New York and they just kind of flew in on, yeah. on the band's dime yeah. and then just put on a big show, like a big wig. And then they left and they went to Hawaii or something the next day. Yeah. Like they, like they went backstage, plopped themselves on the couch back in the dressing room in what is essentially the band's office because yeah. they've been living on the road for two months. Yeah. And then they um, probably want to have a big dinner that nobody in the band actually wants to have. Nope. Because they're not the band now. You're in. You're not in the mode to necessarily uh, eat like that on the road. Is this uh, is this all somewhat accurate? Yeah, you forgot the part where the band pays for it, though. Oh, that's the part of exactly. A really expensive dinner that goes against the band's bottom line. Yeah. That yeah. the band is living off of a, a per diem, except when the manager shows up. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah no, you I know I, it's, yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's another thing to complain about. Right. Yeah. Sure. Seems like it. eh? Hey, speaking of mitts meat, um, were we? Yeah, I said, didn't you see us make mitts meat out of their defense? Yeah, and again, the uh, the us and the we part of it is a little a little uh, unsettling for me. Well, you know what mitts meat is in reference to? What? What is mince meat in reference to? Mince meat? No, it's mitts meat. M i t t s. It's mince meat, but what is in your mind? What is mitts meat then? Well, it's in reference to how Mitt Romney likes his steaks. Medium well. Mitt's meat. So Mitt, Mitt Romney likes a steak medium well is why they call he, it Mitt. They do, yeah. And and I do want to say, uh, uh, to piggyback on, on that, he is my, my entry for tonight's topic. For most boring people. 50 most boring yes. people. I you, drove him in a cab once. You drove Mitt Romney. I did, yes. Okay. And where, uh, how was it? Well, it was really boring. He didn't seem to have any interest whatsoever. In what? You? In anything. And he, he said one of his worst vices was thinking about ice cream. Not even eating it. Just thinking about it. Thinking about it, yeah. Like you pay, like he, he withholds, he's got the discipline to not actually eat the ice cream. Yeah. But he loves just thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. But then he beats himself up for thinking about it. He starts, he has to whip himself. 
very strange. With the shorts. Okay, even stranger. Yeah, yeah. But look, anime, getting back to the big game, we wipe the smirks right off those smug 49ers faces. They think they got it going on in the Bay Area? They don't know nothing about Philly. Again, I don't... So you're really, you're really personalized. I I just. What? No, check it out. All right. You say you got Google, Meta, and Twitter headquarters. Very proud of you. We got Pep Boys, Gennardi's, and Rita's Italian Ice headquarters. (laughs) Well, I, I don't know who wins that one. That one might be a draw. All right. How about this? You got the, the Grateful Dead, Metallica, and Primus. Well, listen up. We got Mannequin Pussy. Rancid Vat, Radiator Hospital, and the Electric Love Muffin. Wow, there we look, you, Roy. Again, we're uh, we're on the same wavelength, huh? We are family. Who me and you? Yes. Okay. Well, oh, you oh, you don't think so? Uh, that's uh, fine. It's, no, it, we can, yeah. Look, Roy, we're we're doing all right. Let's just say we're doing all right. Okay, okay. But look, you know, I'm really happy about the Eagles winning, but I'm kind of livid about something, Tom. What's that? You see that footage of Jello Man surfing the crowd and throwing out candy on Broad Street? Roy, did I ever. Him, the Eagles win the NFC title, so they're going to the Super Bowl. And right. as the people of Philly are wont to do, right? Um, they take to the streets and they start um, partying very hard. Almost what you would call a, uh, if you ever wondered where the line between a party and a riot is, it's that. That's why we call what we do rarty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now... Jello man, uh, brother of Kurt Vile, we we all know. Um, he's been a, a long time listener and and participant in the best show. He went down there to to where's it Broad Street? You said, yeah. And he brought a, a board that he was able to surf, crowd surf on top of like. Like Fred Durst could have only dreamed about surfing on a board atop a crowd as as well as uh Jello Man did it. Yeah, and Fred's a good board surfer. Fred is a good board surfer. The um the thing is he was throwing jello shots at the crowd, I believe. That's even worse. There, there are children out there. Thank you, Roy. Kids need beer, not not hard stuff. But kids don't need beer. They don't need any alcohol. I started when I was two, and look at me. Oh, well, that is the, that might be exhibit A. Okay. Well, look, I'm PO'd because surfing on a crowd on a board is my move. That's your move. Yes, I was getting passed around on a board throwing stolen bite-sized peanut shoes to miscreants outside the Sabbath BOC show at the Spectrum when Jello Man was still in Claude Vile's Ned. What? Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, look, you, you were doing it first is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying show some respect. <laughs> well, maybe he is. Maybe he's honoring you. I don't know, but look, I, I, I didn't want to bring this up, but I got to address something. I know there's been a lot written in the Philly music magazines about me being PO'd because some of my best work I ever did got left off that Eagles Christmas album that came out a couple months ago. But, you know, Eagles, Eagles is fam for life. And it's, I guess it's, it was like, you know, like Paul McCartney told me when I drove cab for him in 89. Roy, lad, you're not for everybody. That's for sure. And how long did Paul McCartney have to make that uh, deduction? We drove two blocks before he got out. 
Before he got out, he got he he his ride was further than two blocks. I think so. Yeah, he ran off into an alley, and then I saw him just kind of lurking with his head out to see if I was gone. Yeah, that's not good, Roy. No, no. Oh, but you know, isn't it weird that there's only one music weekly left in the UK, but there's five still thriving in Philly? There are five. Oh yeah, yeah. We got uh, the. The oldest one, Bop Shabop. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the, the Philly electronic guitar. The uh, Philly electric guitar. Electronic guitar. And a, what is what is an electronic guitar? Well, this thing's been going since 1948, so that's what they called the electric guitar back then. The electronic and, and ne- guitar. Yeah, they never changed it. Uh, there's also the Battery Whipper, uh, Nem Tunes, and Del Val Volume. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, speaking of, I should take this moment to pay tribute to the great Jerry Blavitt, who passed on the other day. That's true. The uh, Geeter with the Heater. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. The be- yeah, the Geeter paved the way for all them Philly DJs who came after him. Uh, you know, Pierre Robert, Michael Tierson, Wee Willie Weber, Anita Gevinson. Denny Somak, Joe Bonadonna, Mohawk, Randy Cotts, Raina Doris, David Dye, Eric Schumann, Jeff Jenkins, John DeBella, Helen Light, Froggy, uh, Ed Skyaki, Cindy Drew, Eddie Hacksaw, Meryl Reese, and Daniel D- Bonaduce, just to name a couple. Well, I'm I'm real. It's really nice to hear you honor the past legends, whether it be Froggy or John DeBella. It's nice to hear you be kind of reverent toward uh, those that that came before. Absolutely, yeah. It's tribute. You know, you gotta you gotta play it forward. Roy, hold on. Give me one second, Roy. Actually, I got a little. Okay. I got a, actually a little. Yeah, I got a little lightheaded for a second. Ooh, okay. Have a, have, a, have a sip of Frank's. Yeah, you got me. Okay, you got me. Yeah, I just got a, okay. a, a little. Can we turn? Can we, would we be able to turn the heat down in here, please? I think I got a little, little spacey there for a second. Take your shirt off and, and just not, strip down to that that white undershirt. I'm not going to take my shirt off, Roy. Please. Uh-huh. All right. So so look. Anyway, get, getting back to these Philly, these Philly rags. Yeah. Sorry about that, Roy. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, I got. Okay. A, yeah, you, you get it, we, Roy. We have our ups and we have our downs, and uh, absolutely, yeah. Sometimes your blood sugar gets really low, and you need to you need a zag nut. Yeah, or a or a or a, or a hundred thousand dollar bar, or a, oh, big, okay, Mister Big Spender. Well, they're it's not more, Roy. It's a it's a candy bar. It's the same price. Oh, um, I thought they cost a hundred thousand dollars. No, they didn't. No, they they don't cost a hundred thousand. They're the same price as any other candy bar. Oh, okay, okay. Well, look, getting back to this this Philly rag stuff, they they're always trying to stir up fights between Philly FPs. Like when they made up those stories about Robert Hazard trying to kill two of the Hooters with a crane. <laughs> I I didn't know about that one. I didn't know that there oh, was yeah. a whole. They, look, the the Philly scene always seemed kind of exciting and and had good good music and good characters in it and but it just was like i never thought that there was so much drama like that oh very cutthroat so the story goes that that robert hazard was he was a few whiskeys into the night down at dobbs Mm -hmm. and there was this construction going on on south street a few blocks up near the ripley music hall Mm mm-hmm so the Hooters are playing at the Ripley that night. Yeah. And Robert Robert is said to have commandeered a crane and then kind of laid in wait for Eric and Rob from the Hooters to come up to the club's back door. Okay. And when they and when they did, Robert swung the big wrecking ball at them. So he he actually was commandeering uh like he knew how to operate that kind of equipment? 
See, that's the thing. It's all BS, as usual with these rags. He only tried to run over them with a cement mixer. Well, that is, of course. Who who hasn't been there? Right? Yeah. That, um... No, cement... Look, because I also think... I, I doubted Robert Hazard would have, like, a permit to know how to operate a wrecking ball. No, he did, though. Oh, he... So, wait, so he actually did know how to operate a wrecking ball... But he, oh, but yeah. in, in, in this case, he was just trying to kill them with a cement mixer. Yeah, most of the bands in Philly had crane licenses. Well, I guess I guess it's holding true to the to the Philly, um, like you know, it's like a working class city, and I guess that kind of tracks for that. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The Eagles are the working class team, and I'll I'll say this right now. I want you you. And all your all your hench people and your listeners to to hear this. Uh huh. I believe I believe so thoroughly that the Eagles is going to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. I am betting literally everything me and the entire Ziggler clan owns on them winning. Oh I, well, Roy, I don't think that's a good idea. Everything, the house. No, no, please, Roy. The the furniture. Roy, I'm uh, I'm gonna ask you politely. The dune buggy. Don't put the dune, uh, Roy. All our cutlery. This sounds very risky. And most important, yeah. The tapes. What are the, what are the tapes now? All right, strap in. Okay. Tom, my old man, Philly boy, Ray, didn't Mm. leave me much, okay? Okay. But he did leave me a shoebox full of cassettes of him spilling all the beans about the inner workings of both the Philly mob and the New York City mob. Really? Yes. Well, that's... That is very, uh... That's huge. Yeah, well, I got to give you a little bit of background. My dad wasn't perfect, although he often said that he was. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He wore a sweatshirt with the words "Even God bows before me" on the front. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 So anyway, Ray Ray was semi deeply involved in the distribution of millions of bootleg wacky packages all over the East Coast. So he was kind of the he was kind of the 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 point man for for bootleg wacky packages. Yeah. Yeah, basically this went on from the heyday from the 70s until the early aughts when only a tiny handful of sad obsessive collectors remained. Yeah, the real and I mean I mean this well maybe not in the most positive way. It's I'm not even going to say it then. It's not there's no no, no reason to put the people down. Every look, everybody collects what they collect. They like what they like. The but the you wacky. You put that on, on a T-shirt. Uh, I guess I could. I, you know, maybe uh, I could go to the place that your dad had that sweatshirt made. Oh yes. Even God bows before me. Right. Well, that's a that's a you got to have some real confidence to get to to even to order that sweatshirt like because like, back, back then it was just iron on yeah you got to go into the place and they go um what would you like uh written on this shirt and you say uh even god bows before me like uh, you but uh, it sounds like your dad wasn't even it wasn't even like pulling his punches with that one no, and can you imagine like the, the the seventy year old lady writing that down as he says it, and then like stopping at the end and like looking up in disapproval? Yeah, as she thinks it's going to be a um, like a like a positive, humble, religious. Even thing. even God loves me. Yeah, exactly. And then she just like like she puts two and two together, and she's just like, oh. Oh, okay. 
Well, look. It's a whole, it's a whole thing. Yeah. So, so look, anyway, so, so my dad, he, he was very friendly with all them guys in the mob, and they told him everything about how the families are run. And, Tom, these stories are insane. Okay. It's it's like Goodfellas, but with fifteen times more f bombs. I don't even know how that would be possible. I don't I don't know if there'd be I, rooms I room for other words. There aren't. I know these guys squeeze these guys. You know, it's that great line from from a Christmas story. My father worked in profanity the way other artists work in oil. <laughs> uh-huh. It's like it's like that. Yeah. Okay. Like that. Yeah. So so look, um, this thing. Is, is going to be a major mob intel, you know, just, it's going to be, it's a total lid blower. The tapes. Yeah, the ta- well, I'm turning the tapes into a book, and that's going to be the lid blower. Wow. Wow. Well, that will yeah. be. The, Roy, you're sitting on a legit, well, I hope you're not sitting on, um, but it's a gold mine. Those, those oh, tapes, yeah. and if you turn that into a book... But you're not get, you're and now, and now wait hold on, going back to what you were saying earlier that's what yeah. you're gonna wager yeah yeah and Tom this book is gonna be it's gonna be as as big as, as spare uh, the 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 royal what is his name Prince uh, Harry. Harry yeah 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 and it's got a way better title too what is the what is your what is your title Papa New Guineas. Well, no, that's the, what do you mean? That that's a city. No, do you get it? It's a it's it's a really clever play on on, on that on that that place. Yeah, you know, there's there's a place called Papua New Guinea, but it, it's spelled P A P A U. Yes, and that's what I thought you and, were. And the, oh, oh, I no, got no. it, Roy. Okay, <laughs> well, you can't, Roy. K N E W. Yeah, K N E Guinea is like a a, a slur against uh, Italians. Tom, what? sure the G word. The G word is, is a derogatory term that people used to used to to call Italians. But don't worry, because I can say it because you're Italian. Wait, hold on a second. You no, that's not how it works at all. You can't. Don't? You can. You can say it. No, people can generally make can say things about their own history or ethnicity or whatever because they like I Roy I am Italian so like even though it's offensive I could it, it, it could be understood that I could say something like that because I am Italian so I could say something about Italians and maybe has a little bit of a, a edge to it but you can't say it because I, you know, you're saying it because I'm a talent. It's not, it doesn't even remotely work like that. Well, okay, I'll give you that. But I can, I can certainly say something like, "It was between the Italians. It was real grease ball." That's no, it. that's really a Roy again. But I didn't make it up. It's in Goodfellows. Well, again, it's really, it's really questionable when you say it. A, uh, a uh, you, uh, you not being. Italian makes it very, very okay. tricky and not cool. No, and I and noted. I and Roy, noted. I'm just going to say this once. Yeah, I seriously hope that I'm the only person you've ever done that to. Do, do you mean today? <laughs> well, I meant ever or, or tonight. I meant ever. Crap. Yeah, let's, Roy, you seriously might want to think twice about that one. Oh, crap. Okay. I, yell, I yelled it at Michael Imperioli the other day. Yeah, not cool, not cool. He was shooting down here. Okay, well, look, needless to say, the info on on, on these tapes is, is priceless, you know, so that's all, all up for grabs in this bet, as, as are my and my entire family's clothes. Okay. Yeah, all, the bet taker made us take all our clothes down to a, a thrift shop to get assessed for their value. The, so you got you. You're serious about you. When you say everything, you mean everything. Everything. 
yeah. So if them Eagles do lose, uh-huh. the Ziggler is literally going to be naked in the street. You, you, and your entire family will be li- literally naked. Hor- and but what if you win? What if the Eagles the win? Eagle- well, if the Eagles win, I got two words for you. Yeah. Gold everything. Wow. So this is a real, this is a real life changer of a. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Gold, gold track suits, gold shoes, gold furniture, gold wooder, gold hoagies. You're really going to be that rich. Oh yeah. 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 But you know, that's that's where we are right now. I stand on the pretzel piece of either magnificent riches or soul crushing penury. One of the most impressive things about you, Roy, and there are many, do tell, is that you manage to say you get the word precipice wrong, and you say pretzel piece. Oh, it ain't that? <laughs> but you get penury correct. Yeah, I know. There's some stuff I know real good, and there's some stuff I don't know good at all. Yeah, you could get that on a shirt. Uh, I would love to uh, have one of your listeners make up a perhaps a poster with that saying on it. Sure, that would be cool. Well, maybe if you get this money, if the, so, is this a straight up whoever wins? You get are, are there? Are you taking points on this or? If yes, I bet if if the Eagles. I win if the Eagles win by 24 points. 24 points. What should it be more than that? No, that's a, that's, I I think the, let me see. What is the line on this game? Hold on. Roy, 24 points. Oh no. This might Roy, you, oh no. Hold on. Maybe I didn't say 24. Hold on. (gasps) Oh my God. Thank goodness. What? 22 points. 20. What is the point spread? Where are we at here? The over under. Okay. Who's favored. What is the point spread? Okay. Well, that's the wrong Super Bowl. Um, I, I, right. 22 points is still a lot. That's, Three touchdowns, more than three touchdowns. Oh, I never thought about it in that way. Oh, oh no. And there's no, you already made the bet? Maybe I can do that thing that George Costanza did where he got fired, but he pretended he, did, he didn't hear it. And he comes back into work anyway. Maybe I can just go about life like, like I never made the bet. But you did make no. the bet. I did. Oh, no. And you know what the guy's name is who I placed the bet with? What? Billy the Face Shredder. That's not good. Oh, no. Roy. Oh. I feel good about it, though. I think we're that good. And, you know, it in, until that game looks like we got a real Cape Cod punk rock sitch right here, right? What does that mean? Oh my God. Are you serious? Uh, I am. Yeah. You run a junior high school radio. It's station not a junior. You don't know. You, you don't know that cliffhanger was the singer in early eighties, Cape Cod, hardcore legends, the freeze. I didn't know that. Okay. And it's not a junior high. It's like, like I like that. I've somehow gone backwards from high school to junior high. No, I- I thought we always said it was an elementary school. I thought I was giving you a promotion. So you thought I just got a little bit of a raise with that. Yeah. No, Roy, it's well, four cents an hour. It's, 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 uh, either any way you slice it, Roy, it's not, uh, yeah, it's not, you're not being particularly kind. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Well, look, I'll, I'll check back in with you in a couple weeks, e- either on a gold berry, which mm-hmm. is of course, black, blackberry stone for the super rich. Yes. You'll have a gold berry or yeah, I'll be talking to, I'll be talking to you through a can on a string. If you can even afford the string. What if I can't afford a can? 
that would be well, Roy. The, I will say this: if yes. ever there was a cliffhanger, yeah, this is it. It is all right, and I want everyone out there to remember: no matter what happens at the Super Bowl last weekend, we did it. Well, I wish That's you. What you thought it was done? We did it. I wish you all luck. Right. I Thank wish you God. luck. Okay. All right. Be- best best wishes. Best for wishes a, for a pro- for a prosperous Feb. Feb- it's, you know it's February, not February. I yeah, I've, I knew that. I knew it was okay. Feb. Uh, February. See, you got me confused now. <laughs> you did it again. Okay. All right. Be safe. Be safe. Also, huh? All right. You, all right. You too. Enjoy. Uh, enjoy, enjoy everything. Okay. You take care. All right. Bye-bye. Um, bye-bye. Wow. That was something else. He's got a lot riding on that game. A lot riding on that game. I hope I hope Look, either way is going to be terrifying. Either his family is going to be rich and that's going to be terrible. Or he's going to be broke, and that's going to be terrible. Win or lose, we we all lose on this one, I think. But I'm rooting for you. You know what? I'm rooting for you, Roy, to win it. Just for because you got you got your family. I want you to be okay. I'm pulling for you. God help me. But I'm pulling for you, Roy. And yeah, I got a little lightheaded back there for a second. The heat was this uh it's very uh very hot in here, right? It's getting hot in here. It's getting hot in her. I'm gonna play a record of record. I'm gonna play a song. And then we will come back and talk all about that's right. We will talk all about the 50 most boring people ever. And once again, we are honoring the late, great Tom Verlaine. So let's listen to the song that started it all for television. Best show back in a moment. Oh, yeah. Television. Little Johnny Jewel. Nobody better. Right? Nobody better. The first single. Um, right? That was the first single. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I did get a little uh, spacey there for a second. The room was very hot, and I got a little uh, lightheaded, so... But your guy's all right. He's all right. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. The 50 most boring people. Where are we at? Let's see what the, uh, the we, we added a bunch of names to the list. I think we're doing pretty good so far. Look at that. There we go. Joe Buck at number eight. Neil deGrasse Tyson, number 10. Okay, we'll keep it going. We'll keep it going. Let's get back to the phones. 201-989-0012. Tom, while we're waiting. Yeah, what's that? Um, I had a suggestion. What's that? List. Is this Andrew? This is, is Andrew. Andrew. This is the engineer, Andrew, the latest uh, a, a member of the Best Show family. Uh, we have Andrew. We oh. got Pat. We got Mike. We got Jason. We got Wes is maybe the newest. Wes, I was about to say, yeah, Wes is uh, actually the newest. I am second newest. We got Brett and Brett and yeah. What what's your suggestion, Andrew? Um, We did. I don't know if we've gone too far in the sports category, but I think Tiger Woods might have to be up there on that list. Um, Well, Tiger Woods should be on the list. Yeah. Um, let's put Tiger Woods at like 28, but there's a picture up on the screen. Now, Peyton Manning is 
holy moly, is he boring? Yes. Yes. Peyton Manning should be number. What was his uniform number again? What was Peyton Manning's a uh, uniform number? Looking was... it up right now. There we go. Peyton Manning, 18. So number 18 on the list will be Peyton Manning, please. Number 18. Yeah. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. That's a great one. And are we are we did we sort the phones out? Hello, Tom. Hello, hi. Thank you for sorting that out. Um, to whom am I speaking? This is Jason in North Carolina. How are you doing? Good, Jason. Where in North Carolina are you? I'm in the midst of the triangle here. Ah, uh, the triangle, which is Chapel Hill, Raleigh, and Durham. Yes, indeed. Yeah, how's that working for you? Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty good. What's your favorite? What's your favorite place to eat? What's your favorite place to eat? Um. Well, do do most of eating at home, actually. So your favorite place to eat is home. Yeah, uh, there's a great little place in Carbro called Mosaic. I like that. Mm. What about the Jimmy John's? Uh. Can't really go down that road. Okay. Can't go down the Jimmy John's road. So what do you got for the topic, uh, my friend? What are we looking at? Yeah, I was thinking about this. Uh, for me, Gene Simmons is a big one. Gene Simmons is boring. Number I four. Because he should be interesting, right? He should be, but he's he's in a position of... Of 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 where he he holds the floor and talks so much and he's this rock legend and everybody he's written books he does all of this talking and he's got nothing to say. Gene Simmons, number four, great one, indeed. indeed. Um, yeah, as a kid, indeed, you know, it was just like a <laughs> uh, uh, Venom reference. Oh, you're good. You're good, Jason. Jason, you're good. <laughs> he caught the Venom <laughs> reference, right? I was going indeed. Oh, I love you. You're a, you're a good caller. <laughs> you you warm my heart with that one, Jason. A- anything else? In the blood. Um, you know, Moby came to mind. Number yeah, Moby sucks. He's so boring. Number 20 for Moby. Yeah, like yeah, these seems, he's seems a crazy. he's a uniquely boring kind of guy. Yeah. I, I loved your explanation earlier of like what make a make, makes a boring person. It it doesn't have to do with intelligence or creativity. It's just like how you hold yourself out in a way. You mm-hmm. know? It's like yeah. Uh I appreciate you saying that. Um it's a unique thing. It's like threading a very specific needle. Cuz again, people mistake being smart for being boring. It's not. People mistake being a jerk for being boring. Not necessarily. People mistake no being even just a blowhard Blowhards can be boring, but it is not. They are not always boring. John Lydon, he's boring to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like John Lydon is boring. Please, can we put him at number six? John Lydon. True. Yeah, that that is that's very accurate. Um, yeah. Anything else tonight, Chief? Um, I don't think so. Hope, hope you all have a great night. Oh, you're sweet. You're sweet. Uh, Jason, you have a grand evening. Bye. Bye. Hey, Tom. Yes. I think I may have number one and number two. Well, this is a bold move. I'm just going to say, I this. know it's a bold statement. I want to say this. 
This is Jason Dudio Gore. He does a show called The Hawk, and um, it's turn these headphones backwards. Uh, he does a show called The Hawk. Now, this is. Would you like to make a wager? <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> uh, what, what kind of wager? We're doing a lot of wagers these days. We are. Um. Let's see. If you were to, um, <laughs> if you are this confident uh-huh. that you feel you can call up and you not call up, you can jump on and say, "I've got number one and two locked down." <laughs> That's the most bold proclamation yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is this is what I'll say. But- if neither of them make the list, oh Jesus, you make the list. <laughs> at what number a low it's number fair. a low number okay okay yeah. this is very fair i yeah. yes i will i will do this oh god no my face let is me, gonna be up there mike, he's gonna pick one of my headshots mike what do you think about this bold it's bold <laughs> would you would you make a move like this mike no um you're too unpredictable tom i can't this See is, which way you're going. Yeah, I, I'm thinking about that now, Mike. But this is what I'll say. If if you're right. Okay. If you, this is what I'll say. If one of them makes the list, <laughs> then you're fine. That's like the, that's like okay. the tie. That's like the purgatory. Gotcha. If both make the list. Right. And I'm even going to let you slide on this number one, number two talk. That's tough talk meant to get my attention. I get it. If both of them make the list, no, no, okay. I'm going to amend it. If both of them make the top 10, you said one and two. I'm even going to spot you top 10. all the way through the 10. This list will say top 50 most boring people brought to you by the hawk. <laughs> Brought to you by The Hawk, 108.9 The Hawk. Okay. Okay. But if neither of them make the list. Right. I'm number one, right? No, you're not number one. No, I can't even make it. I'm going to stick you with like 44. Like a, okay. Like just like you're not even like compellingly boring. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're willing to risk it, do you want to yeah. do this right now? Let's do it. Pat, what do you think of this? Is this foolhardy? Um, it's, it's a little foolhardy, but I, I'm, 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 I'm glued in. I want to see what happened. Please. Right, here we go. No, no, no. Here I, we go. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling this one, guys. Here we I'm go. Feeling this one. Now here I don't know. I don't necessarily know. I think I know which number it would be. Should I just say their names or should I give them the numbers as well? No, you say that, say their names. Okay. Name number one. Bill Maher. Yeah. Bill Maher makes the list. Definitely makes the list. Bill Maher is going to come in at, uh, Bill Maher is number two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's how I was doing this. All then, right. I, then I'm pretty confident, Tom. I am pretty confident on this number one then, but we'll yeah. see. Okay. Number one is Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais comes in at 11. I'm so sorry. Oh, God. So sorry. That's not even top 10, Tom. Oh, I can count. I know that. Oh, no, I get it. Oh. So number 11, Ricky Gervais. Oh, oh, number 44, on. Jason Gore. <laughs> it was always going to go this way. And the list needs to say top 50 most boring people not brought to you by the 108.9. <laughs> I'll take that as well. Honestly, I win both ways. No, way, this is what I, I needed to say. Yeah. Top 50 most boring people brought to you by 109.8 <laughs> The Hawk. Get it wrong. Okay. So nobody. Yeah. The does. buzzard. Yeah. There we go. I love it. Oh, God. Um. All right. 108.109.8 The Buzzard. <laughs> so, well, can you put two on the board, though, Jason? 
Thank you. Thank you. Mike, any ideas oh, for the board? Any God. ideas? If we get a ruling on Kelsey Grammer? He is that classic kind of blowhard. Let's put him at 36. Who else should make this list? I noticed there ain't no uh, lady snoozes on this thing yet. Yeah. You said that like you know somebody you want on the list, Pat. No, I just I just realized it as well. But um, there's a lot of boring dudes, and there's a lot of boring dudes. But is there enough boor- is there enough boring dudes in politics re- represented? Let's yeah, Mike l- Pence should be on there. Mike Pence is so boring. You know who's maybe more boring than Mike Pence, though? Chuck Schumer. Mitch McConnell's yeah. pretty boring. Like Chuck Schumer is the kind of guy who he's ostensibly on, well, not exactly. He's on my side of the street, our side of the street. He ain't no, he ain't no right-wing dude. He's just this boring middle of the... Hmm. Where would you put Chuck Schumer? Mike, where would you put Chuck Schumer? Hey, I'm not a fan of his, but um, I don't know. He's got to be below Mike Pence, though. So you want you're really pushing for Mike? Yeah, Mike Pence, Pence is just kind of like you know he's like a cardboard cutout. I mean, even with yeah. the, the fly crawling across his head, he was not interesting. Yeah, he didn't even feel it. <laughs> he didn't feel, he's numb to the world. Okay, let's put he, uh, yeah, let's hold off on Chuck Schumer, Mike Pence. 26. He started he's the first one to start the second half. Mike Pence. So so we have Tiger Woods at 26. Tiger with Tiger Woods at 28. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Jason Gore at 44. Jason Gore at 44. <laughs> Jason Gore oh, Jason God. Gore the top 50 bore <laughs> sitting pretty at 44. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> It's that's going to be the new playground taunt. If you yeah. ever go on a playground, Jason Gore, the top 50 born, <laughs> sitting up. pretty at 44. Shut Jason, up. yeah. Oh, oh man, that scared me a little bit. Um, my shut up, yeah. It scares right, me, sorry. it's way too convincing. Um, all right, let's go. Best show, hello. Hey, Tom, can you hear me? Oh, I can. To whom am I speaking? This is Travis calling in from Tennessee. Welcome to the show, Travis. Where in Tennessee are you calling from? Way up in the mountains in northeast Tennessee, a small town called Johnson City. Johnson City. That's out by, um, don't say it. Okay, don't say it. I'm going to, let me think. Johnson City, yeah. where is that? I, I, I'm so familiar with, like, I've been, I, I spent a fair amount of time in Tennessee. I know I've been to Johnson City before. Johnson City is, let me think. Is Johnson City, is it, is it, it's south of Lexington, Right? Sure. Well, I'm asking. It is right. It's. Uh, I mean, yeah, southeastish of Lexington. Southeast. It's basically it's like 45 minutes from Asheville, North Carolina. Okay. Place most people know around here. Say that again. So it's. It's 45 minutes from Asheville, North Carolina. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So it's near. Um, it's probably uh, let's see. So Oneida is it's east of Oneida, right? Yes. But yeah, kind of southeast of Kingsport, also. This is why I love you, Tom. You know every place in the country. But it's also northeast of like Greenville, if I remember correctly, right? Absolutely. Where is it in relation to Gatlinburg? That's it's also uh, northeast of Gatlinburg. 
That's right. I'm I'm impressed, Tom. I'm very amazed. But it's direct. It's like directly south of Bristol. Exactly. Where is it in terms of Morristown, <laughs> Tennessee? It's like directly east of Morristown, right? That's right. That that would be right. Yeah. Okay. What do you got for me, my friend? Got a couple of uh, ideas for the list. I, I am a little shaky on one, but the, you were talking about the public-private distinction, so I don't know. Uh, the first one is Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal is such. It, Billy Crystal is is he is Billy Crystal boring? I just feel I love jazz, but I feel like could you imagine being at a party with him talking to you about jazz? Yeah, you know who would be like. What about uh, uh what's his face? Uh, like I'm trying to think of like the showrunners who 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 do things like. Yeah, like who's boring with this? Like, like a day? No, okay. Billy Crystal is Billy Crystal boring? I don't know. People are saying Gwyneth Paltrow on the chat, in the chat. What do you think about that? Is Gwyneth Paltrow boring? Yeah. Yeah, she's pretty boring. Okay. Let's put, um, let's put Billy Crystal at number 45. He's less boring than Jason Gore. But like Jason's beating out six people now in terms of he's not the most Jason, you're very you're very low on the ranking for this boring thing. 44, you almost didn't make the list. Jason, are you there? Oh, we lost Jason Gore. Jason? I think you came down too hard on him, Tom. I think he might have. Yeah. With Billy Crystal, 45. All right. Excellent. Anything, and I anything else? One more. What else you got, Travis? Thought. What else you got, Travis? Ringo. Ringo Ringo's star. not boring. Ringo Water is a Ringo's a ridiculous character, not boring. Fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. I got one more. Oh, you had one more. You're going to have to take that one. You're going to do that one with your family on Valentine's Day. Um, Hello, Best Show. Hi, Tom. Hi. To whom am I speaking? This is Nicole in Chicago. N- How are you? I'm good, Nicole. What's going on? Well, John Lydon was one of the two people I had, so you got me. You got me there. Um, so I have a really dumb question to ask you that I came up with while you were playing the television song. And what's that? Do da. Were, remember Johnny remember John Lydon was do da. He uh she's just so boring. Yeah. Like she's so edgy. Yeah. So uh, what are you thinking here, Nicole? Uh, well, here's my question based on the television song. Yes. If you, if you were going, if you were smoking uh, like an electronic vape cigarette, mm-hmm. would you call it Little Tommy's Jewel? You are so close to getting hung up on. <laughs> oh, Nicole, if you only knew. I swear, I just... <laughs> This is what I'm going to say, Nicole, and I say this with (laughs) peace and love. There are two steps for me to hang up on somebody. I did the first step, and then I didn't do the second one. Just (laughs) as a, as a, that was just a motor reaction. (laughs) 
I, what's the first step? Well, I did the first. There are two technical steps to hanging up on somebody. It's, I have to click two things to hang up on somebody. I clicked <laughs> the first one on you. I didn't click the second oh. one because I just was. You drew me back in with a weird sense of intrigue for why you would say something like that. I have just been in an annoying mood all day and just dad jokes will not stop coming out of me. We don't call them dad jokes anymore on this show. We call them. No, where were you? You're from Chicago, right? Yeah. We call them Nicole from Chicago jokes. Well, my coworkers would agree with me. Well, from now on, (laughs) mark this down, everybody on the best show. Nobody can say dad jokes on the show anymore. They can say, I just made a Nicole from Chicago joke. (laughs) Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Remember Gilly? Is Gilly on the list? No. Sorry. Gilly. So what else you got for me? Now, clearly, you didn't call to just do that little Johnny Jewel joke. I did not. No, I thought of it while you were playing it. Yes. Um, so the other thing I have for you is not a timely person, but there's someone who's so boring that they just enrage me, and it's James Taylor. James Taylor is pretty... Is his music boring? Is that enough if somebody's music is boring? His music is so boring, and he just drags down those around him. Like, Carol King wrote way better songs than Fire and Rain. That's true. He just, like, spills his boringness onto his collaborators. Mm-hmm. He's boringly handsome. He just kind of skated by in that whole 70s California group. You saying boringly handsome just moved the needle a little bit on me. Do you know who, who who's the most boringly handsome person going? On the count of three, you and I are going to say it. Right on the count of three. One, okay. two, three. Ryan Reynolds. Oh, you're right. Who are you going to say? I was saying Army Hammer because it's impossible for me Ooh, to remember Army that Hammer. Ryan Reynolds. Army Hammer ain't boring. He's a whole lot of other things. Boring, boring ain't one of them. He's not that <laughs> That's true. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds is very boringly handsome. Number five, Ryan Reynolds. James Taylor, I'm not sure. His music is so boring. Have you ever heard the song Walking Man? Well, I'm a walking man. I do as much walking as I can. No, it just the walking man walk. It's awful. He's just like. Nicole, do you think I've heard the song Walking Man? Do you think I've heard it? Yes. I I ain't heard it. Yes, I know you have. I know the good stuff, Nicole. I know the good music. (laughs) The OCs. uh, Warm drag. Ty Siegel, <laughs> Shannon and the Clams, the good stuff. <laughs> Think I know, I'm sitting around listening to Gorilla by James Taylor. Yeah, Gorilla. I looked up his songs. This is what James Taylor does. You can avoid him until you're just having just a soul-crushingly terrible grocery store trip. Mm-hmm. And then you suddenly find out there's a song called Walking Man. And he just says, and the walking man walks, walk on, walks like 80 times while you just can't find the three last things you need and you can't get out of the Mm -hmm. store. Yeah. You're shopping at the wrong stores. (laughs) It's true. You got to go to, I go to this poke place, Nicole, Mm -hmm. out here. Do you know what poke in Chicago? I'll explain what poke is to you. Do you know the <laughs> do you know the stuff that comes from the ocean? Mm. Fish, you know yeah. what that is. Well, imagine yeah. if instead of dropping a big giant slab of it on a thing, you just did a little bit. 
It's breaded though. You just didn't. No, it's not bread. It's not. It's not fried. It's not breaded. I know you think that no. in the ocean, it's fillet of fish sandwiches swimming around in there. It's not, or it's they not giant. The breading off. I know you, they don't even bread. There, there's no breading on. Oh, so okay. It's yeah, and they mix it with like. Now this is going to be a weird thing. Do you know when you and the people in Chicago order like a chef salad and the turkey and the ham and the roast beef? There's like this like green stuff underneath it that sometimes gets stuck yeah. on your fork when you're stabbing at the meat. Yeah, yeah. Those it's are like, it's so called vegetables. Scrape. Those are called vegetables. Oh. And those are okay. mixed in with the with the uh with the controlled portion of seafood. Hmm. Yeah. So this poke place I go I to L- they play nonstop the filthiest hip hop I've ever heard. <laughs> And I'm saying this place has old people eating in it, families eating in it, and they're listening to people basically giving a guide on how to make a baby. (laughs) Like, is it like literally a a tutorial? It's a TED talk set to music on. How to make a baby. I'm trying to be polite because we have families <laughs> listening. Um, yeah, they they sure like uh, they sure like their hip hop at the poke place. It does not sound boring. It is not boring. Um, yeah. So where'd we leave off? You got You got uh, what else you got for me, my friend? And we are friends. I just had Taylor, but I have to tell you, he has a song called "Oh Baby, Don't You Loose Your Lip on Me." I feel like I should be able to get a restraining order on him just because of that title. Oh baby, don't you loose your lip on me? What is he doing? I mean, what is what is he uh, uh, a d- detective in the forties? Or went, or Cotton Mather? That's like a Cotton Biden. Mather line. Cotton Mather wouldn't have lines as oppressive yeah. as that. Sinners in the hands of an angry yeah. God. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. He 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 gets a little too close to trying to invent his own like blues song titles, and mm-hmm. I don't I don't yeah, like it. No, it's we're done we're done so with him. All right, thank you, Nicole. Okay. Bye bye. Phone number two zero one nine eight nine. Zero zero one two. Want to tell you all a thing or two about the best show? Just so you know, if you want to support the show, patreoncom slash show. There's bonus stuff up so far. Ruben ask ask Tom for Horseman. New stuff going up, uh, and you can also get the pod the podcast of the best show up there ad free on the Patreon. You can also get it over at Forever Dog Plus if you're a Forever Dog Plus member. And make sure you're subscribed to the best show on your podcast app, please. And rate and review the show if you could. And you can check out the video over at youtube.com slash best show for life. The number four, which is also best show for life, is where you can join us over at TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. Back to the phones. Back to the phones. I'm very troubled by. Let's just go and see what happens. Hello, Best Show. Hey, is this me? It is you. Hey, this is Casey in Chicago. Another uh, Chicagoan. How are you doing tonight, Casey? I'm, I'm I'm doing well. I'm a longtime listener. This is my first time calling in. Uh, welcome. I lived in New York for a while, and I met you outside of uh, Hollywood Diner once upon a well, time. Well, welcome. It's so nice. I remember that. It was very. Er, it was very late at night. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, two or three in the morning. Um, 
Yeah. What can you do? Anyway, I, I had two to start with here, and I know you just did the politics, but I, I wanted to toss out John Kerry just because I feel like his boringness uh, in the Bush election really uh, kind of led to the loss. John Kerry is so boring. He's remarkably boring. For ketchup, a man who's ketchup man. Fairly interesting life. I call him ketchup man. Um. <laughs> Yeah, let's uh, John Kerry. I'm going to sleep on that one for a second. Um, okay, I got I got another with the same initials. What do you got? John Krasinski. Twenty four, John Krasinski. All right, there we go. Anything else, my friend? I mean, yeah, we got. I mean, I have a few others. I've got some uh, some friends tuning in for the first time, and they were tossing out uh, Pat Sajak and Anne Hathaway as well. Look, I want to just say this. Everybody who gets on Anne Hathaway can kick rocks. <laughs> right. I don't know why people have such a uh, ruffled uh, britches over Anne Hathaway. Yeah, you, you think she's uh, you think she's not born? Yeah, uh, I'm just saying. No, she's not born. I've 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 had the. I've actually met Anne Hathaway a couple times, not to be some sort of. Thing. She's okay. very nice. She's very nice, and she. Oh well, no, you know, you know better a, than I do. I had a, long, I, had a, I, had a I actually had a substantial, semi-substantial, conversation with her. Don't want to say it's substantial, but it was not nothing. She was outside a Hollywood diner. She was extremely. Uh, uh, she was she was, a great to have a conversation with. That's all I'll say. She was very nice. I like okay, her a lot. Okay. So yeah. Well, so. I'll take it. I'll take it. So get off my phone. How dare you put down Anne Hathaway? How dare you? Hello, Best Show. Hello, this is Mike from Minneapolis. Yet another Mike from Minneapolis. Another Mike from Minneapolis. Oh, What's up? What's up? Hello, sir. Uh, there's a long, a lot of mics from Minneapolis that call, so yet I'm another one of them. But I, uh, so my thing is, uh, um, and this based on a, a last month's call from Mr. Jason Walliner, and he uh, uh, he advocated the show that I have just. You watched. better not put Jason and on this need- list. How dare no, you? No, he's no. a friend of mine. No, no, no. You sob. No, he's awesome. He is a. You say it's, no, no, he, no. He, let, he is my friend. You let me down. I know you led me down a primrose path, and the path is this infuriating type of boring. It's infuriating, but it's still boring because it's the same bad note played over and over and over. And we've got to go with Mr. Paul T. Goldman. Oh, my Lord. I'm not going to do any spoilers, but that man is infuriatingly boring. He is pretty boring. Number 19, Paul T. Goldman. And everybody should check out. Everybody should check out Jason's. Uh, series. Oh, right. Paul, okay, I, I heard you. I heard you. Let me talk now, okay? <laughs> oh, that's the scariest laugh I ever heard in my life. Oh. The scariest laugh. <laughs> Sounds like... Uh, All right, you're funny, though. Yeah, no, I know I'm funny. I'm me. <laughs> Nobody... It doesn't get no funnier than this, Mike. I, w- I would not disagree. <laughs> yeah. Well, well what, are we, what are we smoking there? What are we smoking? Eight packs a day? Are there any no, left? Are there any no, packs no. left? Are there any packs left in Minneapolis while you're smoking? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, but here, oh, wow. let's throw out another one in the infuriating list. Donald Fagan. Infuriating human Donald being. Fagan, Enduring. number 21. That's what I'm talking about. Now you're winning me back, Mike. You and your yeah, smoking I ways. Fagan. I knew Donald Fagan because that's your wheelhouse, man. M- smoking Mike is your new nickname for the show now. No, I, I, I literally never smoked in my life. Well, what are you, what are you doing? You're doing something wrong. I, I, you're, a high, you're in a highly amusing individual. Everyone knows it. Highly amusing individual. Everyone knows it. Ask anybody. Hey, you know that Tom Sharpling? Oh, yeah. He's a highly amusing individual. I enjoy his company. God say. bless you. You're hurting my feelings and making me feel good at the same time. I don't know how you're doing it, but you're doing it. That's my, that's my gift to you. 
Well, I have a <laughs> gift for you too, my friend. I have a gift to you. Uh oh. Do you want it? <laughs> no, I know what it is. That was my gift to you. Good old fashioned gomp. Get off my phone, Mike. <laughs> Put myself in the hospital doing an impression of that guy. How's he actually doing that 24 7? Oh, this is vodka. No, it's not vodka. Sorry. Hello, Best Show. Hey, Tom. It's Casey from Long Island. How are you doing tonight? Casey from Long Island. What's going on? Are you the second Casey of the night? <laughs> I am. Different state, though. Different state. Different state. How are you tonight? I'm doing great. Great show so far. Oh, thank you. So far, we're going to get it. We got it. We got uh, 40 minutes, 45 minutes to go. We're going to bring this one in for a landing. Can't wait. Um, I wanted to throw out uh, Joe Buck or Troy Aikman. Joe Buck's on the board. Joe Buck, number oh, eight. I'm sorry. I've been old for a while. Um, Garrison Keeler, is he on the board yet? Is Garrison Keeler on the board? Should he be? Is he boring? So we say a mean spirit. Was that mean spirited? If it was, I apologize. Mike oh, from oh. Mini- Mike from Minneapolis, I apologize. I didn't mean to be mean spirited. I apologize for giving you the business because you got your your you you're you're laughing up a storm and I it sounded like you needed medical attention. I truly from the bottom of my heart apologize. I look at this chat and sometimes I just want to freaking barf uh, over at twitch.tv slash best show for life. Tom's mean spirited. Tom's mean. Mean. If I was mean, am I mean? Am I mean? Pat, am I mean? What? No. Thank you. Mike, am I mean? Ah, thank you. Andrew, am I mean? What was that, Tom? Sorry. I said, am I mean? Am I mean? You are not a mean person. Tom's not mean. Uh, 44, am I mean? (laughs) (laughs) You're not mean. Even in this situation, you're not. (laughs) (laughs) Who's a, who's a famous sports 44 guy? Uh, uh, Derek Coleman from the New Jersey Nets. There we go. Get him, get him a jersey. <laughs> Just get, him, get him a jersey. <laughs> Mike's going to buy you a Derek Coleman jersey. Please. <laughs> Let me just say one thing. In all seriousness. In all seriousness, people say, Tom, you're so mean. You, you're just mean to the producers on the show. Jason, you tell him how mean I am. You tell him how mean a magical coffee cake showed up on your freaking front lawn. Very nice. Thank you. And I had to bring it up on the air because I am not mean, but I am weak and need to tell people when I do something good. Um, no, it was very nice. But then you also texted me and Kristen that there's a uh, that you saw on the news that people are poisoning coffee cakes and just tossing them on uh, you know, on. Uh, Lawns. That's true. That's true. I did. Well, I had to put a little thing. Look, I really appreciated it. No, of course. I w- and I'm only saying it on the air because I'm, I'm weak of character and I need, uh, I see people criticizing me. I see a t- Tavy saying, Tom, you're mean. You suck. <laughs> I see that. I see another guy saying you're mean to the guy who was coughing up a storm. Whatever. People are saying mean bon- 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 Bonnie bon- Ver. People are saying to put on the list. Bonnie Ver. I don't know. <laughs> That's a good one. But Bonnie Franklin. <laughs> There's also something poetic about this entire li- list just being dudes. 
Bonnie Prince. Uh, Billy. Bonnie Prince Billy. We should do Bonnie Franklin, Bonnie <laughs> Prince Billy, and Bonnie Bear. <laughs> the three piece. The three piece. I do like <laughs> and Jason. <laughs> I hope you don't take this. Uh, I hope you don't take this. Uh, it does look pretty good seeing you next to uh, Billy Crystal. <laughs> There. Well, the way that it's situated is I'm more boring than Billy. <laughs> oh, Christine. no, that, that's what I mean. I'm saying there's okay, good. There's six people less boring <laughs> than you. Yes. Number, f- we're going to do a, a double threat crossover. Number 30, John Kassir makes the list. The Crypt Keeper. He was on double threat and holy moly, could he have not have been more boring? <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right. Let's get back to these phones. Okay. I'm not mean. Hey, Tom, mean. can I throw out two more quickly? Uh, what's that now, Casey? Can I throw out two more? Yes, quickly? please. Yes, Bill Lesh please. Or Bill Wyman? Who's that now? Phil Lesh or Bill Wyman? Phil Lesh. Who's more boring, uh, Bob Weir or Phil Lesh? Oh, definitely Phil. Bobby's pretty endearing sometimes, but. Mike, you're the you're the expert on this on Grateful Dead. What do you think? <laughs> it's a pretty close call. You, you you've got uh, well. There's only one way to settle it. Number thirty three, Phil Lesh. Number thirty four, Bob Weir. <laughs> okay, all right. I don't have a problem with that. You should be on this list. Should Shaq be on this? Shaq's not boring though. He's he's not. He's maybe he's not always funny. Man, Kenny Smith is boring. Now, who's the most boring? Iron Eagle? Is he born now? I'm missing a, I'm missing an, a basketball uh-huh. person mm-hmm. who's Kareem? boring. Kareem is no, Kareem's not boring. He's he's insanely interesting to me. Um, who's a basketball announcer? Oh, Bill Walton. I think he thinks he's interesting, but he's actually boring. <laughs> Larry you know, Bird. Mm-hmm. Larry Bird is pretty boring. I think he's more boring than Michael Jordan. I think you're right, Mike. And he was 33, but we just put 33 as uh, Phil Lesh. <laughs> was he always 33? What was his college number? I can't remember numbers. Let's see. What was his college number? Let's see. Larry Bird College Uniform. Oh, 33 also. <laughs> now, um, Coach K, should he make the list? Okay. Uh-huh. He's pretty, he was pretty boring. Oh, I love the trivia that just went up. Uh, did you know I am a highly amusing individual? Um, thank you. Real, real fun fact for the for the heads out there. Um, Casey is still on the line. Oh. I think we lost Casey. Here we go. Hello, best show. Hey, Tom, David, yeah. in Bellevue, Washington. How are you, David? What do you got for me? We're gonna start picking the pace up a little bit now. What do you got? I got a couple if you're willing to uh, entertain entertain more than one. I am. All right. Uh, so heavy hitter would be Bono. Now, people were saying The Edge is more boring than Bono. What do you think about that? Bono. Uh, uh, <laughs> I know, maybe maybe you've got a double header there because the edge is on at number forty. Bono's Bono's much more boring than the edge. He was boring. Billy Bob Thornton is boring. Whoever said Bonnie Prince Billy's boring had hit it on the head. Bory Prince Billy, Bonnie Prince Bory. <laughs> Not putting him on the list, though. Not putting him on the list. 
How about Jordan Peterson? Yes, Jordan Peterson. Can we go to uh, let's Jordan Peterson? Jordan Peterson number number nine for Jordan Peterson. That's a top ten. That's a top ten boring person. Can I give you one more? Of course you can. Tyler Perry. He's not boring. Not boring. He ain't boring. Woody Allen. Not boring. Infuriating. Taylor Swift. Gross. Taylor Swift is boring to me. But I don't know if she's top 50 boring. It's not even that she's boring. She's just kind of just, she's perfect is what it is. It's the way I will always pick like Kesha. I always prefer Kesha over Beyonce, for example. I like the people who the flaws, they're amazing and they're super talented, but the flaws are definitely, they're not perfect. But okay. Taylor Swift is is perfect. She pretty much is. I mean, she does everything perfectly. She's insanely successful. Her songs are are great and everything. See, it's not a judgment on talent at all. Mm. Robert De Niro is going to be on this list. Number 15, Robert De Niro. Please. Frank Zappa should be on this list. You ever hear him interview? No. Like when he did that interview oh. with, um, when he was on Letterman with with Moon Unit, and Moon Unit is cracking Letterman up by saying like, "Oh, I want to do Hawaiian Punch commercial next," and Letterman's like, "Yeah, all that." And then Frank's like, "Well, you know, the music industry actually limits." Me. And you're just like, "Oh my god," you know what I mean? Oh, I think he got a lot of mileage out of his uh, Senate testimony. Frank Zappa, uh, where should he be? Let's put Zappa uh, 31, please. We'll get, We'll put him lower. We'll put him lower than he normally would go. And who was number nine again? Jordan Peterson? Is that who he said? Yes. Jordan Peterson, yes. Number nine. Any others, David? No, that's it, Tom. Love you guys. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Thank you. We're doing a good job filling this one out. Uh what what are we David, looking- Jim. Hello, hi, welcome to the best show. To whom am I speaking? This is Joe. How's it going, Joe? Where are you calling from, Joe? I'm from L.A. How about you? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. To what do I owe the pleasure of this call, Joe? Yeah, so I have a couple, if that's okay. But Yeah, yeah. Let's um, hear them. Let's hear them, Joe. Cool. So the first one is maybe obvious, but I think it needs stating, is uh, Chris Martin from Coldplay. Nah, I'm not putting them on. Oh, that's right. Frank Zappa is no longer alive. Sorry, I'm just noticing. We were trying to do it. Well, we're trying to do it as a list of alive people for the most part. But there might be a couple snoozes that slip through. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just trying to get the I'm trying to get to the bottom of this whole uh where are we going here with this? Gwyneth Paltrow should be on here, right? What do you think in here? If somebody just asked, why are there no NPR hosts on here? That's a great question. Help me with some NPR hosts. Say Michael Barbaro from the Daily. 
Yeah, Terry Gross. Uh, Terry Gross, number 15 for Terry Gross. Sorry, Terry. We have De Niro at 15. Uh, Terry Gross at number 12. Who else? Gwyneth Paltrow. Um, is Gwyneth Paltrow, is she top 10 boring? No. Is she top 50 boring? Like maybe like 50. Or like in the 40s. All right, let's put, put her somewhere in the 40s then. Gwyneth Paltrow. Thank you. This is a good one. Fauci is boring whether you like him or not. He is pretty boring. Whoever said that... Uh, oh, I look at this. Let's see. Um, God help me for looking at this chat. I uh, really want to... Uh, sand my own face off when I look at it. Um, a few people in the chat were saying Seinfeld. Well, Seinfeld is boring. Um, Ricky Gervais was 11, right? Yes. Okay. Just Any, uh, the top I mean, we could move him up. No, no. Top 10 is pretty full. Let's see. Who's boring? Is Madonna boring? When she talks, she's boring. Her music's not boring. Hmm. Hmm. Jay Leno. Yeah, he's not boring. He's he caught on fire the other day. It's pretty exciting. Oh, and then he wrecked his motorcycle. And he the broke following both his week. kneecaps on a motorcycle. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> we can always just you know shift shift it up, and then uh we'd have Gervais at ten. No, no, we wouldn't. I'll 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 move you to ten before I move Ricky Gervais to ten. <laughs> He ain't moving. All right. Okay. I, I'm just, I'm just throwing, I'm spitballing some ideas, Tom. I know. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Um, yeah. See, this is the spirit of it. I'm looking at right now. Frances McDormand is boring. She's a phenomenal actor, but boring. That's what I'm talking about. Who's like, but I don't agree necessarily with Francis, Francis McDormand on this one. But who is like that where they're just boring? But they're not bad. You know what I mean? People keep saying Whoopi Goldberg. Daniel Day Lewis. But what, how do you even know how boring he is? Yeah, Jamie, thank um, Jamie Lee Curtis. He's kind of boring. Talk more about that movie. Yikes. Mayim Bialik, people are saying. Yeah, she's she's very boring. Mayim Bialik, who do we got? Where are we at? Uh, 24? Can we do Mayim Bialik at 24? That's John Krasinski, Krasinski John but we got Krasinski. 22 and 25 open. Let's do 22 is Mayim Bialik. Uh, Ken Jennings. Ken Jennings. No, nah, he's just a... You're about to say dork. I was going to say dweeb. <laughs> yeah, Taylor Swift is boring. She's incredibly talented. She's so boring, though. 17 can she go 17 and who's this one guy unloading on me saying i'm boring i suck get out of my chat i pay for this crap throw them out all right 
throw them out. 100-year ban. 100-year ban. You're right. People with no flaws are boring. Yeah. Sam. Call me names. I got one thing. It's a stupid show. You get on me. How dare you? Your guns, oh, chief. Um, let's see. No. All right, let's take some calls. Let's let's take some calls. Well, here we go again. Boys, I... Joe, are you still there? Yeah. What do you here. got, Joe? Let's talk about it. What do you got? Help me out. Fast. Fast, Joe. Fast. Yeah, I mean, I had Chris Martin, Daniel Day-Lewis, but uh, my other one is uh, Bruno Mars. I think uh, very forgettable Super Bowl. It's true. He's kind of so professional. He's kind of interesting in the fact that he was an Elvis impersonator when he was a kid in Hawaii. That's not unboring. He's just too, I think of when I think of like conversations with musicians going south. Yeah, I get you. I get you. I'm not feeling it exactly, though. Thanks, buddy. Well, here she goes again, blowing everybody's circuits. Best show, hello. Oh, hi, Tom. <sighs> hi, who's this? Uh, let's say my name's Walter. Okay, Walter. Do you have anything for the list, Walter? Well, I know this guy, and he's so boring. But sometimes I steer the wheel. What's what's that person's name? Hmm, let me look in the bag. Hey buddy, what's your name? I don't know what's what this your is. Name, buddy? <laughs> I don't know what this is. I don't know who this is. Sometimes this show I think people are calling the show instead of better help. I think they misdialed. Um, I don't know his name, but he should. <laughs> Hello, Best Show. Hello? Hi, to whom am I speaking? Uh, Jacob. Jacob, what do you got for the topic? All right, so I believe that Mark Zuckerberg is boring. Mark Zuckerberg is boring. Man, I'm trying to think. He's boring. Mark Zuckerberg is boring, but he's he's just evil. In a way that <laughs> he's more evil than boring. Put Mark Zuckerberg at 46. Right. Put Mark Zuckerberg at 46. Anything else? Jacob? Oh, uh, I'm kind of unsure about this one, but I, I think Chris Pratt is kind of boring. Chris Pratt is pretty boring. I think Audrey Plaza might be more boring. Ooh, shots fired. Shots fired. But that's, that's, her, that's her whole thing. But that's what makes me think she's not boring is that she's putting on the affectation of playing the character of boring. She was not boring on uh, uh, whatever that thing was, uh, rich people on vacation. She was born. I mean, I, 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 I tuned out. Well, I kept watching because I was not bored. I was not bored. Mm. What's that show called again? White White Lotus. White Lotus. I thought it was called Rich People on Vacation, but um, anything else, caller? Oh uh, no, that's all. All right. Well, thanks for the call. Hello, Best Show. Hello, Best Show. How are we doing? Hi, Tom. This is Jerry in Buffalo. How are you doing? Good, good. Uh, what do you got for me? A few, actually. Um, not really relevant now, but Dennis Miller. Yeah, he sucks. He's not boring, though, to me. Uh, 
Joel Bonamassa? I don't know who that is. Blues, modern blues guitarist guy. I don't know enough to know if that if that ranks. Anybody else? Eddie Trunk. Eddie Trunk. I clearly am not bored by him. I listen every day. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, last shot. Um, Al Jardine. Al Jardine from the Beach Boys. Well, that just sounds like you have some sort of weird axe to grind. I, I like Al Jardine. I'll listen to it take a load off your feet, but it's the backdrop of the rest of the Beach Boys to not have done yeah. No, in terms of. Mm, no, sorry. Bye bye. Well, here she goes. Okay, a couple more. Let's keep it going here. Hello, best show. Hold on. Hello, best show. Hi. Hi. To whom am I speaking? This is Christine in Oakland. Christine in Oakland, what do you got? Um, Ian Mackay. Mm, he's not boring. He's he's got uh he's disciplined. <laughs> he's pretty boring if you mm. if you listen to what he has to say lately. Yeah, he might be a little boring. I don't know. Hmm. What about any lady snoozes? Any help with that? Lady snoozes? Yeah, I can yeah. only think of... What? Fun lady. What? <laughs> you sound so shocked. <laughs> um, boring ladies. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. Really? We put Gwyneth Paltrow on really, the board. Really, really. What's that? Who? Oh, okay. Gwyneth Paltrow is definitely a snooze. <laughs> what were you saying? Yeah. Kim Kardashian. Kim, Karda- Kim, Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian. The Kardashians are very. Those. That's as boring as it gets. I actually think some of them are pretty amusing. Okay. I like Chloe. <laughs> okay. Um, but Kendall is very, very, very boring. Kendall Jenner. What about the mom? Mom. Chris. Oh, she's hilarious. She's oh, drunk all the time. God. Pulling power moves. And you like hilarious? Yeah. Hilarious. I mean, maybe not intentionally. Well, this is what I would like you to do right now. Just replicate. <laughs> no. How hard you've laughed at how hard you've laughed at um Chris uh Kardashian. Just show, just give me a laugh. Huh? I don't is, is, <laughs> I'll, then I'll do the laugh. I'll do the laugh. Is it like this? Okay. <laughs> or is it Maybe. <laughs> Definitely not that. No. Okay. Okay. Maybe more of like a smirk laugh. Hmm. Like that? Hmm. Well, that's not a laugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's unintentionally funny, so you're kind of okay. laughing at her, not with her. Number, well, go to the first page, please. Uh, number 14 uh, is going to be... Um, One Kardashian's going in at 14, and you can help me pick who it is. Let's let's do it. Who do you say? Kim? Kylie? Chris? I think Kendall Jenner Kendall. is extremely boring. Kendall does that have to be a Kardashian? It does. Oh, okay. Well, then, then who else um, should it be? Who else should it be? What's I'm just the gonna... one that's married to Travis Barker? She's extremely boring. 
What? Who is that? What's her name? Um, Kim, Chloe, and what is her name? She's so boring. I can't think of her name. I think it's Courtney we're referring Courtney. to. Courtney. Number 14, Courtney. Yeah. Courtney goes in at 14. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else? That's it. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. You have a grand evening. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. Four more calls and then we wrap it up. Hello, best show. Hello. Hello. Hi. To whom am I speaking? This is Pat from Philly. Pat from Philly. Well, where? What are we looking at here? What do you got for the list? I, I know it's late in the show. I got a couple. I'll throw them at you real oh, quick. I want them. It doesn't matter how late in the show it Carson is. Carson Daly. Carson Daly. We heard that one already. I'm thinking on it. I'm thinking on it. Okay. How about Billy Joel? Have we talked about him yet? He's not boring. Billy Joel's not boring. He's not good. Not even, boring. Even though. when he looks so painful when he's answering questions about his songs, like you don't think you that know, makes him like interesting. You can't believe people are asking about his song. That that sounds interesting to me. Okay, Eddie Murphy. Weirdly boring. You're right. Like what happened? I'm gonna think on that one. Okay, here we go. Okay, other page, please. Number one, Sting. Number one, Sting. He was my next one that I was going to say. Well, then you did it. You came up with the number one person. Sting, number one. Can, go ahead. Go ahead. Can I throw out one more? Jay Mascus? He's not boring. He's just an oddball. Jamila Jamil, she's okay. kind of boring. This is a good list. Jamila Jamil is kind of boring. Sixteen know. slots to go. Sixteen slots to go. I was recently. Um, I was watching. Have you ever watched Brian Johnson's show where he he interviews people from ACDC? Yeah. Nah. He's got like, you know, Sammy Hagar's got his road show where he interviews people. I think it's all on Access, that, that the the channel Access. Mm-hmm. I never and seen so it. And so it's Brian Johnson interviewing Sting. Okay, here we go. Roger Waters Which is, is boring. I love Roger Waters uh, in a lot of ways. He's boring. 25 for Roger Waters, please. Tim Duncan. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. Tim Duncan, uh, what was his uniform number again? What was he? Eight, he was not 18. 18 was, uh, uh, why am I blanking on Tim Duncan's uniform? What what has become of you, Tom, that you can't, uh, 21 was his uniform number. 21's Donald Fagan. We're not moving people around. Roger Waters, 25. Tim Duncan, Second half, please. We'll go as high as we can. 27 for Tim Duncan. Here we go. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Kawhi Leonard ain't boring. Belichick? No, he ain't boring. He's a crab apple. He ain't boring, though. All right, buddy. People are saying Cheryl Crow. I'm not buying it. I don't buy Cheryl Crow. It's boring. Thanks for the call. Well, here she comes again, blowing everybody's circuits. Hello, best show. Hey, Tom. Hey, who's this? Uh, Joseph from Nashville. What do you got for me? I was thinking Seinfeld. Seinfeld's pretty boring. Okay, let's think on that. 
Okay, that's all I got. Oh, uh, I did see in the chat um, earlier someone said Lauren Michaels, and I thought uh, he's always seemed kind of boring to me. And he's but. interesting. He's interesting. He's uh, he'll make other lists. He would make other lists. Hold on. Here we go. Hello, best show. Hey, Tom. Um, this is uh, Brian in Dallas. Brian in Dallas, what do you got for us? I was going to say Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. Uh, you know, he sucks. He's just not boring. Is he? Is he that? Does he? Is he as boring as he is sucky? You know what I mean? I can, can he not be both? I, he's one of the most popular artists in the world, and I couldn't tell you anything about his personality. Hmm. That's true. Um. Yeah. Don't know. Don't know. Mm. Somebody's saying Jennifer Garner. Does he do interviews? I've never even seen him do an interview. See, the thing is, like, you can make a case that, like, Beyonce might be the most talented person on this whole list, but she's so boring. You know what I mean? <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? I would say Ed Sheeran is less talented and more boring than Beyonce. Help me out with this. Uh, Dudio? Okay, what's the dilemma? Beyonce is so incredibly talented, mm -hmm. but she's boring. I think she gets a 100% a pass because every time I've seen her, I think I've seen her twice in person. Mm -hmm. And there's always like angelic light shining down on her. It, it, it's, it gives you chills. I don't think that's boring. Pat, what do you think? I think you're on to something with her, but, you know. Mike? Boring boring encompasses a lot, so. Yeah. Mike? Be able to I think Drake is more boring. Drake is pretty boring. Yeah, Jake, yeah. Drake goes in. What do we got in the 30s available for? 37, 38, Drake 39. goes to 37. Beyonce, we're putting it 50. I'll, I'll spot you your thing, Jason, that there's a glow coming off of her. I think you <laughs> you might need to go get your eyes uh, checked. I think I just don't worry. It might be cataracts. Um, you might need glasses. Beyonce at 50, because I do believe she's boring, incredibly talented, maybe the most talented, but also boring. Sarah Jessica Parker, people saying, not boring. I was there. Not boring. Other lists might top them. Not the boring list. Quack, 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 quack. Right? Drake is so boring on that video. He's even boring in that video. He yelled at his mom about a tuna fish sandwich or something. I think you're thinking of suicidal tendencies. It was a Pepsi. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Drake. I think it was suicidal tendencies, and it was a Pepsi, Mike. Um, <laughs> there was a tuna sandwich involved. Mike, it was Mike Muir from Suicidal Tendencies. <laughs> uh, caller, are you done? Uh, Chuck Mangione. Chuck Mangione. What, do you do your family wrong or something? This sounds like a <laughs> sounds like you're trying to even an old score. Bring up Chuck Mangione. Uh, the, that's all I've got. I can't go the high note. Right. All right, you're out of here. <laughs> How many slots we got left? Quark, 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 quark. Hello, best show. Hey, Tom. How about Kenny J? 
Kenny G, not boring. Troubling, yes. Boring, no. All right, have a good night. You too. Well, that was fast. All right. I have 12 slots open. What about you, Pat? 12, yep. Can you confirm? Great. Okay. And that's with Beyonce at 50. With Beyonce. That is with okay. Beyonce at 50. All right. How about the Sixth Sense guy? And my Shamalam. Yeah. Shamalan. Um, no, what's his face? What's that di- direct? James Cameron is boring. Please, can we go to the first page? <laughs> Number three, James Cameron. <laughs> Am I wrong? No, you're right on the money there. Right. Um, Rick Rubin's getting a lot of mentions. Rick Rubin is boring. Put him at put it. Did we do twenty five <laughs> as Roger Waters? Yeah, uh, Roger Waters is twenty five. The number thirteen is Rick Rubin, and we close out the first half of the list there um people are saying jeff gorlock uh what do you think about that jeff garlock jeff garlock yeah that from the hawk from the hawk maybe gorlock is from the the h-o-c-k one 109.8 uh-huh. the hawk. all right caller hello caller are you there hey Caller. Caller. Chris, Chris Berman. Good one. <laughs> Look at that picture of Drake. He always looks like he loves these turtlenecks. <laughs> quack, 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 quack. Port up, port up. What are you falling out? Oh. Trip, climb, ten diamond rings. Not in the continent, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Money on my mind. I got money on my mind, right? Okay, caller, welcome to the show. What do you got for me? Um, let's put Bono Lester at four. Holt. Let's put Bono at thirty nine, please. What? Let's put Bono at thirty nine. What well, caller? What do you got? Um, what about um Lester Holt? I, 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 he's like a news guy or something. Yeah, I saw a um, a uh, like a profile on him, and he was just sitting in his basement alone playing the bass. That sounds sad, actually. I'm not some boring. Um, Brian William Brian oh. Williams at forty seven, please. Oh. No, not Brian Williams. No, yes, Brian Williams. And Lester yes, Holt. get off my phone. No, 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 not Brian Williams. No, Lester Holt. Because <laughs> Lester Holt's in his basement playing bass. That makes me sad. He's Where was Bono? 39. He paired up with the edge. Oh, look, they're together. That's nice. Should we put Jeff Gorlock on and- there? How about Andy Goldsworthy? Who? Lord. He uh, goes out in nature and makes sculptures. He's like wicked famous, but like extremely boring. I don't know who that is. What's your name? He's a Scottish, like, I'm Charles. Charles? Where are you calling from, Charles? Massachusetts. Okay. Number 48, Charles from uh, Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> you made the list, Charles. That's how it works sometimes. <laughs> um, where are we at now? Now we have to be pretty close to the end, huh? Yeah, we're close now. We I got, got seven. Um, He's boring as that guy who does egg foo what with Mike. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Lance Dubrow. What is it? <laughs> yeah, that's his name. That's a good name. Now, what is his name? What is his name? Lance Dubrow. What's his name? Roger. Greg Raleigh. Greg, Greg Raleigh. Raleigh. Greg Raleigh. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's like not the Greg. baseball glove. It's not Greg Raleigh. <laughs> what is Wilson. his name? Greg Wilson, number 49, Greg Wilson <laughs> from Egg Fu What? <laughs> I'll take it. It's a plug. Uh, Mike. <laughs> Mike. Yeah. You get it. I've been doing this for Jason all night. I can't yeah, mention could you, could you change 44 to Jason Gore from 108.9 The Hawk? I keep mentioning The Hawk, Jeff Gorlock, and he's getting mad. He I'm not getting mad. He doesn't realize I'm plugging the crap oh, out of the show. It's a great plug. I'm plugging the crap out. Mike is like, oh, you yeah. want- Mike goes, yeah, it's a plug. <laughs> Jason's like, yeah, like he's been paying payola guys all day long. Jason's like, you SOB. You oh, put man, the hawk on that list. You. Yeah. See you in the parking lot. All right. Um, let's see. So we're very close, aren't we? Six. Six to go. We can close you, this out right now. You can put Jeff Gorlock on there. That's too like. late. It's too late. The moment the okay. moment passed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the moment passed. Sometimes so he got less boring. He got less boring. Who else is there? Let's see. Where are we at? Where's my chat? David um, Fluster Wallace. People are saying Yeah, Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah. Malcolm Gladwell, where's the slot for Malcolm Gladwell? 38. 38, Malcolm Gladwell. Kelly Ripa? I don't know about Kelly Ripa. Someone from news. There's a woman from news that should represent, and I don't know who it is. Maybe someone else from the View or uh, Morning News. Lloyd Baylor. Rachel Ray. Very interesting. People saying yeah. Rachel Ray. Rachel Ray is pretty boring. Julie Bowen from Modern Family. That's as boring <laughs> as they get. 30 where third where can we go with that uh 29 or 29 41? 29 okay. 29 charles de gaulle <laughs> no i'm not putting that on <laughs> did we get uh did we get larry bird on there i don't think we did then put him in one of the fi- final three there pick one of those for him 41 so, no, like the final 47, 48, 49. Well, for, 47 is all, all the bottom 47 to, to 50 are. are okay, are cool. 40, then put them at 40, 40, 41 then, Larry Bird. So now we have 29, 16, 17. No, 29 was uh, the, the, woman, the woman from Modern Family. What's her name? Yes. Oh, Julie Bowen, Julie Bowen, 29. So who do we got now? So now we have 16, 17, 18. No, they're done. Those are done. Sixteen, seven. The top twenty-five are done. It's locked. No, the the top thirteen were locked. I'm looking at t- one through twenty-five are all filled. Twenty-five. I'm looking at it right now. Ben Stein, sixteen. Taylor Swift, seventeen. Peyton Manning, okay, eighteen. Okay, yeah. So let's go there to. You know. I think we're full. I think we just completed it. Then can you go to the back? The back half, please. Who's 29? Julie Bowen. Right? Yep. 38? Yep. 38 is Malcolm Gladwell. Who's 39? 39 is Bono. Okay. 29 we just filled. 29 is so Julie who, Bowen. 41? So who's 17 and 18? 17 and 18. It's uh, filled. It's filled. Who's 41? Taylor Swift and... So 41 is Larry Bird. Larry, Larry Bird. Bird, who's 47? Brian Williams. Who's 48? Charles, Charles from Massachusetts. From Mass. <laughs> Who? Charles from Massachusetts, that guy. Oh, the caller, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And who's 49? Greg Wilson from Egg Fu What? We're done, we're done. The list <laughs> is done, everybody. <laughs> now we're going to celebrate. Can I take five minutes to celebrate with uh, a thing? Uh, do you mind, guys? Go for it. Hey, 
Should we wait till next week, Brett? We'll wait till next week. Sound collage next week. Sound collage next week. Had a whole one planned. We're doing it next week. I'll give you a little preview of what you're going to get next week. I'll do two minutes of a sound collage right now to tell everybody what you're going to get next week. Today we're listening to Trial Mask Replica. Trout Mask Replica is like a critically acclaimed album of just like a bunch of sounds strung together that are just hammered together. It's critically acclaimed. It's by Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band. A lot of people adore this album. A lot of people despise this album. I'm here to see which side I'm on. I'm really sure I'm going to hate this album. That's twice as long as California. It has twice as many tracks as Trent. I, I am not looking forward to listening to this. I am tired. I don't want to listen to Trout. I don't want to listen to it. I don't want to listen to it, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> but enough trying. Let's see how good this is. Okay, so you probably listened to like five seconds of that song. You probably already want to die. That that song is a minute and 40 seconds long. That's incredibly short, but it's still it's too long. It should be one second long. I don't want to listen to this album. Ah, so all the pros I can give it, sometimes it's a little bit of a and they could make a good song, and they have on other Captain B part albums. But here they just decided, hey, what if we spend like a year making this piece of absolute horse? Oh, on the <laughs> it would be funny. It would be funny. There's a lot of guitar. The instrumentals are technically good. The people playing the instruments are good at playing the instruments. That does not matter at all. I do not care. It's not a masterpiece. It's not experimental. It's not avant-garde. It's just crappy folk rock. It's crappy folk rock. <laughs> that some that Captain Beefheart was like, oh yeah, they were <laughs> 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 the audio stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Even like for floating with his little pistol showing and his little pistol toting. Bye bye. The best show is produced in partnership with the Forever Dog Podcast Network. The show is hosted by Tom Sharpling and features John Worcester, Michael Lisk, Jason Gore, and Pat Byrne. The show is produced and written by Jason Gore, Pat Byrne, Michael Lisk, Brett Davis, John Worcester, and Tom Sharpling. The best show is executive produced by Tom Sharpling, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. Co-executive produced by Jason Gore and Pat Byrne, segment producer Michael Lisk. The show is engineered and mastered by Andrew Gleason and Wesley Knapp. Graphic design, video editing, and social media by Brett Davis. Website and technical support by Martine Sellis. And the show is recorded at Forever Dog Studios in Los Angeles. Support The Best Show on Patreon over at patreon.com slash thebestshow. And follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Best Show for Life. That's Best Show number four, Life. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.